think it's really delayed. Can everyone hear me? Is the like quality okay? <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm looking at comments by the way, because I got my other phone over there. <laughs> hey Sophie. Hang on, I just need to go put this up on Instagram. So that I'm actually here. <laughs> it was meant to be here like 20 minutes ago. How do I link my channel? I don't know. Go in here maybe? Sorry, <laughs> a bit slow at this today. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Let's go back over here. Oh my gosh, so many comments. Now I'm back here. Okay, that's good. Oh, can't see what I'm doing. There we go. So I'm reading all your comments. <laughs> Okay, so we've got Germany, England, Scotland, USA, Pennsylvania, Singapore, UK, New, New Jersey, Minnesota, Hawaii, Sydney. <laughs> oh, people all over the world. <laughs> Hi, how's everyone going? Um, I saw it come on a live because I don't know. I just felt like doing that tonight. Um. I'm going to be flipping all my scrunchies uh, for orders. It's not all of them. Um, I still have a few more to sew up, especially like XL ones. But I thought I'll just jump on now because otherwise I wouldn't be able to jump on for another hour. Um, hopefully I'm in picture. I don't even know if I'm in picture. Indonesia, Arizona. Oh, it's morning in England. England. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna start flipping my scrunchies. If you have any questions, let me know. I forgot how to do lives already. <laughs> I haven't done one for months. Like it feels like only just yesterday that I did one, but it wasn't. It was months ago. And it feels so weird. Like that it was just, yeah, so long ago already. Time flies. And for anyone that has no idea what this is, this is my flip stick. My dad made it. Um, it pretty much is just an old piece of wood with this long um, stick thing. And I flip my scrunchies with it. I have two different types of like scrunchie methods. I do burrito for the XLs, which is what I'm doing now. I'm just like, I'm doing those. Uh, but for ones that are like long like this, I use my flip stick. <laughs> my um a good sewing machine um i'm pretty sure so if you watch sewing machine do you have is it brother brother's a good one and i love alna this one here which i you probably can't see very well but yeah that one's really good experience 550 it's pretty pricey though um but i reckon any of the alna ones are pretty good alna janome uh, brother, they're all pretty good. Probably stay away from Singer, even though I've got two of them. <laughs> uh, they're just not what they used to be. Like, my Singers are really fast, but that's about it. <laughs> they're not uh, very, yeah, like, they're a bit clunky. I don't know how to explain it. Um, by using, like, my Alna one and then using the Singer ones, there's, like, a massive difference. I'm just going to put some lip balm on because I've already got to try this. Oh, so many comments already. 
Yeah, it's delayed on my phone too. Sorry if it's a bit delayed. It probably will be. Um, have you ever thought about making and selling anything that isn't a scrunchie or bow? Yeah, so I've made heaps of things over the years. Like, I always adapt to um, just, I just adapt. <laughs> like, I did, um, like, clothing for a while. Like, I did tie-dye shirts, um, tie-dye socks, tie-dye hats. And that was pretty big for about two years I did that. Um, and then sort of faded it out of it, tried to clearance it off. I still have heaps of the stock left, though, from that. Um, I've done stickers. I'd probably get back into stickers, but at the moment I'm just so busy with scrunchies. But yeah, I do like designing things. Um, what else did I do? I did jewellery, um, like chokers. So I did like necklaces, um, like that was a really big craze back in 2015. Uh, 2014 when I first started making scrunchies. Oh, actually, I made bows back in the day. I didn't start making scrunchies until like 2018, I think. Um... What else have I done? I've done quite a few different things over the years that yeah aren't hair accessories, but I think now with my brand, I'm trying to stay with hair accessories um, or loosely based around there. Um, I will be bringing out eventually some adult headbands, but that honestly, it probably won't be until next year now just because I'm so busy. Um, and I am also bringing out merch. So if you have any questions about the merch and stuff, I might be able to give you guys a sneak peek at what I'm bringing out. But, um, yeah, I'm bringing out merch and, like, quotes. Not really quotes, it's more like words. Just, like, single words um, that I'm bringing out. Um, that will be, in, yeah. I, wouldn't, I would like to say design by me because, like, really, I just, I just chose a font, really. Uh, but, yeah. And I'm getting it all made and within Australia as well. But yeah, I'm getting quotes at the moment for like all like the jumpers and stuff. And oh my god, it's it's been it's been a what it's been a ride. It's <laughs> pretty expensive stuff to do, um, especially with like the really good quality uh, jumpers and materials and stuff. So yeah, there's but that's that's coming soon. Um, and yeah, the headbands. But I'm gonna try and like stay within the realms of. Like hair accessories, you know, I, I think I might change my mind in six months. Like at the start of the year, I thought I was going to change this into like more more sticker based and that didn't happen. <laughs> I just started making more scrunchies. So, um, okay. I'm probably like really, yeah, I'm like five minutes behind now in comments. Sorry. I like to talk a lot. Um, how many scrunchies do you make a day? Uh, it depends. Like. If I'm making scrunchies for orders, I'll tend to smash out a lot more. Or if I'm like on a, if I'm like on a time limit, like if I've got orders that need to go out, or I go to market the next day, I'll tend to smash out heaps more than <laughs> if I'm just sort of like, oh yeah, I need to do this by like you know end of next week. Yeah, I'll, I'll go heaps slower. Uh, at what age did you start? I started at 15 years old. Um, so that was a long time ago, <laughs> almost eight years ago now, actually. Um, and what made you get into it? Well, when I was 15, I really wanted a part-time job. I just really wanted to make my own money. Um, and what happened was my boyfriend at the time, he had like this little niece's birthday and like I was invited and I really wanted to get her something, but I had no money obviously because I was 15 and with no part-time job. So I decided to make her something and I googled things to make for little girls and it came up with hair bows. So then I started making hair bows um, and I made some for her. But then I saw an ad, I think, on Instagram of someone selling like their handmade goods. It might have been hair bows, I can't even remember now, it was so long ago. But um, yeah, someone was selling their own handmade stuff. I think it was from US on Instagram and I was like, well, I could do that. Like, all I have to do really is figure out how to post them. And I went to the post office with my little shoe box. I, I remember I had a little shoe box with my mum. She just drove me to the post office because we live probably a five-minute drive from the post office. And, um, yeah, Jenny was there, which is uh, the post office lady. 
and I like brought them in. I'm like, how can I post these? <laughs> like I want to post them like within Australia, maybe even overseas. And yeah, she explained it all to me back then. Oh my God, postage was so cheap for envelopes. Like <laughs> they've gone up so much since I started. I could, I can't even remember. I'd have to find a photo of like my first ever, I think it was 70 cents. So two stamps at 70 cents or maybe 60 cents. So $1.20. The dollar twenty sounds about right. Two thousand and fourteen, uh, in two thousand fourteen, dollar twenty to send within Australia for twenty um, twenty mils in an envelope, and then overseas was like two dollars seventy. It was it was ridiculously cheap. Um, so yeah, that's how I started my business. Like I just was like, I want to make some money. I'm going to start making hairbows, and then it just evolved from there, really. So yeah, it's been it's been a good eight years. Um, oh yeah, so the sewing machine so has is a brother, and yeah, so that's recommended. Brother Janome or Alna, I'd recommend. Um, are you going to sell bow kits? I have a feeling. Did you buy my bow kit? Are you are you the lady? I can't remember your name. Name. I'm so sorry. I'm terrible. Terrible. Shocking with names. And I don't want to say the wrong name, just in case. <laughs> um, I might, yeah. Like, I do have so much supplies for bows, and they are relatively easy to make. It's just more the I'm worried that people won't have uh, glue. I know you can use like hot glue and stuff. I, I suppose most people that make things would have hot, a hot glue gun or just glue in general. So yeah, possibly I possibly make it, and then I'll make a new bow tutorial because my old, yeah, the other one's really old, and I need to make a new scrunchie tutorial. Um, I'm going to make a new one and an, and an XL one. The XL scrunchie tutorial is coming soon. I just haven't got around to filming it. <laughs> so many different things I want to film. Um, what sewing machine do you recommend? So I personally have only ever used Alma, uh, and my two singers plus a Semco from Spotlight. So Honestly, I, I can't really say which one um, I recommend out of like Juki Brother, Singer, or Ber Bernina. Bernina. Um, I probably, out of all them, I wouldn't recommend Singer just because I know that they've gone down in quality. Um, they're just not what they used to be. But like Juki, I hear amazing things about and same with Brother. I haven't really heard much about uh, Bernina, but I mean, it's still probably a good machine. First time I've been able to catch, on a, catch you on a live. Did you feel an earthquake the other week? I'm your woman and still can't get over it. Yes. Um, so for my US or really anywhere else in the world, uh, Australia doesn't really get earthquakes because we're in the middle of, um, what's it called? One of the tectonic plates. We're in the middle of that. So we're not on like one of the edges that rub together and cause the earthquakes. So <laughs> when we had an earthquake the other week, that was really like, whoa like it was it was different um when when that earthquake happened i happened to be in bed um i was on very strong pain medication because i was sick quite sick um that week and i honestly thought it was my pain meds and i was like what is going on I'm like the room was shaking and i was like oh my god like i've I've overdosed, I don't know. Um, but no, it wasn't that. It was the actual room was shaking. So I ran out of bed to grab Flo, uh, which is my dog. And yeah, we hid underneath the doorway. I don't know. That just was my first instinct. I'm like, I'm pretty sure you meant to do that, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I went, went to a doorway and went under there. It lasted like 30 seconds though. Like it was pretty, it was very like intense. The lo only other earthquake that I've like I've been experienced and stuff was the one um it was like a Melbourne one again it was years ago though like I was quite young um I thought it was a airplane crashing um back in yeah ages ago but it wasn't it was an earthquake <laughs> I don't know what year that was it was so long ago yes Abby um oh so funny hi <laughs> Rolls reverse and I get to watch your live streams. I've been watching Abby, uh, which is Ahana and Co, uh, on her live stream nearly like, every night. Just something to do. <laughs> um, so she's been, uh, she was restocking for her launch that happened on Friday. And yeah, she's got so many orders and I'm so 
so happy for her. She did so well. So yeah, I've been doing that. And she also makes a feature in one of my upcoming videos because I did film a little bit of her life. Not too much. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did film a little bit. Um, how do you choose materials? How far are we behind? We're 10 minutes behind in comments. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it's going to take me a while. I talk to you too much, so... Okay, how do you choose materials? Um, if I see it and I like it, I buy it. <laughs> it's it's a bad habit, um, because at the moment, I don't, you can't even see over here. Over here, I've had to clear out shelf room because, uh, I need more, more room for my fabrics. So yeah, I really need to get, um, a move on and start making more scrunchies and <laughs> moving this stock along. Because I just keep going to Spotlight. Like, I'm tempted to go tomorrow morning because, uh, we're out of lockdown again. So, uh, or well, Latrobe had another lockdown for seven days. Uh, is that number eight? I don't know. But, yeah, so we were in lockdown for a little while. And, yeah, uh, Spotlight's opening back up again tomorrow. I'm tempted to go, but I'm like, no, I should not. I really don't need any more fabric. Like, last time I went, I came home with, like, two massive bags. And that was only, like, a week ago. <laughs> so, I don't need any more. But I'll buy more anyway. I've, I'm really glad I've given you inspiration to start your own business. I hope you do really well. Um, what fabric do you use for scrunchies? I use anything for scrunchies. Like, there isn't a fabric that I'm like, nah. <laughs> I've got so many different types. Like, I even use, like, some furnishing fabrics. Like, maybe some of the really thick drill furnishing stuff I wouldn't use. But, I mean, I've used some, like, I've used it sometimes. Um, like, specifically, um, some, like, some designs, they just don't come in the cotton stuff. So I have been known to go to the furnishing section and have a look over there. Um, in Spotlight, that is. I don't know, I use velvet, cotton, satin, rayon, uh, linen, uh, cheesecloth, double cloth. Uh, what else we got over here? There's heaps of different fabrics. I can't even name all the fabrics behind me because I'm not really... Um, just because I'm so scrunchy, I mean, I know much about it, <laughs> about fabrics and stuff, honestly. Um, yeah, I just, I just know if I feel, I'm like, oh yeah, that'll work. Um, how much do you need to start a scrunchy biz? Well, honestly, I started my business with $50. I'm going to make a video about that, actually. Um, which, that was both, so it's a bit different because I didn't actually need a sewing machine for that. But really, all you need is... Um, some postage supplies, a sewing machine, and some materials. You really don't need much um, to start, like, a little hobby sort of thing. But if you're, like, wanting to start a full-on business, like, you obviously need to think about, you know, your insurances um, and your business name, registration, uh, which can cost, like, 40 bucks. It's not that much. Um, ABN's free, which is Australian business number. I don't know what it would be like in other parts of the world um like for a legitimate business so you don't need a lot to start out um what size of garter are you using i'm sorry i don't know what that that i don't know what that is garter i'm not sure what that is uh if you want to comment below and let me know what that is i'll get to it in like 10 minutes I see Reese is on. <laughs> He's offshore at the moment, my partner. He flew out Monday and he gets home just before my birthday. I thought he was, wasn't going to be home for my birthday, so I'm so excited. Uh, my birthday is coming up very soon, actually. What day is it? Yeah, like 14 days away. Um... We are now 13 minutes behind. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Is there best fabric you can use for scrunchies? I really... Okay. So, this fabric I'm loving at the moment is, like, satin. Specifically, the deluxe satin from Spotlight. Um, like, you can get some other satins that fray heaps. But this particular satin, I don't think frays, like, nothing compared to some of the other satins I've had. Um, I love this that sort of satin. And velvets. Like... 
This is um, called Galena from Spotlight. This is my favourite as well. It's from the finishing section. But yeah, it's, it's just such a nice fabric. Hi Simone. I haven't been on for long. Have I'm only just getting through these comments. <laughs> 13 minutes behind. Oh goodness. Um, if you had to choose between Shopify and Etsy, which would you choose and have you tried Amazon Handmade? I would choose Shopify, um, hands down, just because it's more um, personalizable, um, less fees if you're actually selling, um, you know, a little bit of product. product. <laughs> um, yeah. I feel much safer on Shopify because like Etsy closes down stores for like no reason half the time. So uh, like Shopify is still good, but yeah. Um, and I haven't tried Amazon Handmade and I'm pretty sure Amazon Handmade is actually more expensive than Etsy that I've read um, and look like a lot stricter and stuff. So I don't think I would try Amazon Handmade, especially because like I'm in Australia, maybe if I was in the US, uh, it might be different, but yeah, I don't... It, Amazon's not really that big over here. Well, in my opinion. <laughs> Garter is elastic. Thank you. Sophie's got me. Um, I now forgot what the question was. Let me go look what that was. Um, what well, size Garter? Okay. I'm using, uh, I use 20 millimeter elastic. <laughs> That's a really thing about that for a second. And then I like do eight and a half inches. Okay, now I've lost my spot. I don't know where, I'm, where I am here. How many things have you ever sold at the, mar at the market? Um, I'm not sure. That'd be hard, really hard to say because I've been doing this for so long. Uh, yeah, bit bit hard to say with that one. There'd be a lot though. <laughs> My picture looks fine on here. Sorry, I'm only just getting to comments again. Um, my picture looks okay from this, from my phone. Uh, if it goes in and out, it's probably the Wi-Fi, honestly, because I'm in the back room. I have the, I bought a Wi-Fi extender, but it's still not the best. Um. Do you have a favorite fabric from the Christmas collection? I do. Let me find it. Where is it? Oh, it's the, it's the Maria. That nearly hit me in the eye. This one. I don't know if you can see that. I'm like watching myself and I don't know if it's showing yet. Okay. So yeah, it's this one. It's my favorite from um, the Christmas collection. I saw it and I was like, I gotta get like five meters of that. <laughs> I usually only buy a couple meters, like one or two. Um, but anything I think that I really like, I buy heaps of, or if I think that it will sell well, I'll buy heaps of. Um, um, I don't have a link for my cutting mat because I bought it from like a small independent uh, like business. Like I bought it from like a business that's just, you know, um, down the street. From me you know um so it doesn't like actually have like a it's not a massive retailer but what it is is a fiscus mat and it's the a2 size i'm pretty sure but yeah it's this one and yeah it's just fiscus i don't end up poking my eye out with this thing yeah 2012 the other victorian earthquake that was so long ago. I'd love to know if you have any other retail supplies for fabrics other than Spotlight. At the moment, I don't. Um, possibly in the future, I might. But 
I really do prefer to feel the fabrics. Like, I don't even purchase online from Spotlight. Like, I rarely purchase online from Spotlight. Um, so, yeah. In the future, maybe. Like, I have people messaging me all the time saying, oh, you should purchase from this place. And, like, like giving me, like, really good advice on where to, where to buy from. Um, let me see if I can add you as a moderator. I don't know how to do that. Anyone know how to add someone? As oh wait, I have to add it on here. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. If anyone knows how to add someone as moderator, uh, let me know, um, and then Sophie can message me <laughs> to tell me how to do it, because I don't know how to do it. Um, hang on, I'm going to scroll down. Can I block him? Maybe I can... Hang on, I'll go on to my, wait, I don't know how to do that. I'm not very technically advanced, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Here we go. Hide user on this channel. Yes, he's gone. And where's, here we go. Add moderator. Here we go, I Sorry guys, te technologically um, challenged here. I figured it out. Thanks everyone. <laughs> um, Sophie's now a moderator as well. <laughs> I think. Let me know if I didn't add you, Soph, because um, yeah, I nearly added him as the moderator. <laughs> Terrible. Thanks guys. Okay, I'm scrolling back up now because, um, yeah, I was like really, really high up. I didn't even know what was going on. Okay. Um, um, have you ever tried your hand at other crafts like crochet or knitting? Yes. I've done knitting before with my grandma. Um, she taught me how to knit and she actually made me this beautiful blanket out of, um, I actually gifted her all the materials, like um, all the, what do you call it? The balls of yarn. I like gave it back to her um, like nine years later, 10 years later. I, this was a very long time ago. So I just only had just given it back to her because I found it again. And she knitted me like this beautiful blanket. Um, if I remember, I'll go get it later on in the live stream. But I actually don't know where it is right now. I can't think about exactly where it is, so like I don't want to like go running around for it. But yeah, it was beautiful. She made it for me. Um, other crafts I haven't really done much, mostly because I don't. I haven't really had the time to, I suppose. Like I did knitting when I was like eight or nine. So yeah, it's been yeah. I don't have a lot of time to do other things, unfortunately. What time is it where you are? Um, it's 9.42 at the moment. So that means I'm about 13 minutes behind in comments. <laughs> um, five thirty a.m. Uh, hi, I'm working on orders too right now. That is dedication. It's so early. <laughs> We've got Louisiana. How do you keep up with orders? Um, that's my stick. There it is. I I usually have like a set time that I do orders. So I usually do my orders Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, of the week. Um, and yeah, it just depends on how many orders I have that week. Sometimes I'll even start on the Sunday because uh, I'm mostly made to order. 
Um, but I do have, usually, I have a lot of market stock, so it's usually not as bad. I usually have quite a bit that's, um, you know, made, pre-made, so it doesn't usually take too long. But yeah, at the moment, because uh, uh, most of this is Christmas, I, yeah, I've got a lot to make compared to like what I would usually. Because yeah, none of it's pre-made because it's um, all new. Um, how was it selling on Etsy to begin with? It seems complicated with all the charges. So, I really loved Etsy in the beginning. Um, I, I've been on Etsy for almost eight years now. Uh, I did make the change to Shopify in February of last year. Um, the fees, I think, are pretty good considering, like, you're protected in a lot of ways. Like, yes, Etsy side with the buyer a lot of the times, but you're also protected from, like, chargebacks and stuff. Whereas, like, Shopify, you're not. So, I think they're worth it, in my opinion. Um, they're about 12% for me, for the fees. Um, it, it depends on, you know, what you sell, though. Because, like, if you're selling a low-price item and you sell a lot of quantity, your prices are probably going to be more than someone that's got a high-priced item and only sells a couple because you've got that 20 cent USD transaction fee every single time. So, and that can add up very quick. Um, but yeah, I recommend it. See, it's, it's a good platform. It just does take a little bit to get used to the fees, but just remember to price your products accordingly. Never sell yourself short. Um, tips to stay awake while working. Um, I usually watch a movie or something or listen, I don't listen to music, I'll be honest. <laughs> I rarely listen to music. I usually watch movies or, um, I watch YouTube, but like I have to be in a certain mood to watch YouTube. I don't know why. I just, I really got to be in a certain mood. Um, but I do like watching like people just, I like hearing people just talk. I like just background noise as well. So, um, when I'm on YouTube, that's sort of the stuff I'm looking for. I usually watch PewDiePie or Cinnamon Toast Can, if I'm being honest. Um, uh, but yeah, just, um, you know, water. I don't really drink any drinks or anything. Um, I always try and get enough sleep though. Like, I think that's really important as well. Like, um, it might seem like I do work a lot, but I always make sure I get enough sleep because sleep is so important. Like, it is seriously so important. So I always get like eight hours sleep a night at least. Like, and I know that's like, what? How do you do that? I just, I, I make it happen because <laughs> I can't function without enough sleep. Like even this morning I had like six and a half or like almost seven hours and I've been like weird all day. But I guess it hasn't been good. <laughs> just I haven't been um, right. South Africa. Oh, uh, I don't have OnlyFans. He won't stop. I thought I blocked him. Ah, I'll try again. I think I blocked him. I thought I blocked him last time too. Thanks guys for the support. Let me know if you comments again and I'll try a different button. Because <laughs> it doesn't actually say block, it just says remove from channel.
Okay. So just let me know if he pops back up. He's back! How the hell is he back? I'm gonna start a new life, guys. I don't know how to get rid of him. <laughs> I will be back. Oh, I'm gonna leave, lose all my messages. Hang on. I'm gonna start a new live in a minute. I'm at the bottom of the comments now. I will go back up eventually. Um, but yes, I did get a new phone. Okay, I'm gonna try and work out this. I've lost all my clients. <laughs> yeah, I can't see. 
say everything. Hey, um, I, I did go screenshot them before I played with settings. Let's go have a look at this. <laughs> so technologically challenged. Oh my god, he's back again. No, I don't have the OnlyFans. <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore him. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay. I'm just gonna ignore him, just ignore him, guys. Okay, um. Can you go back through all my messages, though? Like, all my comments? Because, like, I'm way behind. <laughs> Um, about like how many bulk orders do you get in a week? Um, so like I do wholesale. I usually get, usually I only get like two to three a month. Like I don't, don't usually get that many, but, um, last month I had like nine, which was like a lot <laughs> for me. Um, already this month, I think I've had four or three. What day are we? Yeah. It's been, I've, I've had a couple this month already. Okay, I only screenshot half of these comments, I'm sorry, but it says um, something about that your first market is on October 23. Any advice for a first timer? Um, definitely try and get F an FBOS machine, um, like a square. They're only about $59, I think, for the tap version. Um, tap is so much easier, definitely recommend. Um, also, make sure you bring water lots of water and like snacks as well um and get there a little bit early because you may take a bit longer to set up than you expect um what else i don't know can't think now brain's all flustered also it might be a good idea to try set up your gazebo and like your market store before you go to the market so like just set it up in your backyard see how long it takes you um work on like your displays and stuff before you actually go to the market that way you don't get there and on the day you're trying to work it out what's your biggest tip to grow your business and how did you um my biggest tip would be utilize social media um, so as you know, I have YouTube, um, I'm getting into TikTok, I'm trying to get into Pinterest, but I don't know, I saw do some research on that, and Instagram, of course. Um, Reels and TikTok are really effective. Um, I'm still trying to work out TikTok, but I think, yeah, once, once you get in the groove of TikTok and, like, posting consistently, I think it's really, like, uh, quantity over quality for TikTok. Uh, oh wait, yeah, quantity over quality. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, just utilize social media and like word is word of mouth as well. So if you do do markets, make sure you bring your business cards, um, and that sort of thing. Because I've had a lot of people from markets find me and like follow me and do that sort of stuff.
Hey Taylor, how are you feeling now? Uh, so I'm feeling so much better. Uh, I was sick a little bit, <laughs> a lot. I ended up in hospital, but it's fine. I'm okay now. Like I'm completely all good. I also got my first jab on Friday and I was fine. Like, uh, it was, it was all good. Um, I was really scared because I'm absolutely deathly afraid of needles. Like I'm so scared of needles. But uh, Reese and I went to go get it together. Um, I booked him in straight after me. Um, we were very lucky to get the Pfizer because um, it's not really available anywhere. But um, yeah, when I logged in to go like book in, I was able to get us both in for like the same time pretty much. And yeah, we got it uh, one after the other. And yeah, we didn't really have any um, side effects, which was good. Like I was really worried about the side effects because a lot of my friends have had side effects. Um, like just, you know, general drowsiness and stuff, stuff that would um, mean that I wouldn't be able to work. But I was still able to work when I got home on the Friday and it was good. Where did you start learning to make scrunchies? Um, actually from a spotlight, like little pamphlet. And the reason that I started making scrunchies was because of Matilda from The Bean Spider, which she's sold that now. Um, it's someone else that owns it now. But Matilda asked me if I could do um, scrunchie tutorials for, like, little kids. And I've never even really thought about scrunchies before. Um, this was years ago. It's, like, four years ago now. Um, they were only really just coming back in again. <laughs> um, and I really thought that would be kind of out of trend by now. But I feel like it's just growing and growing um, but yeah, that's why I start, how I started making scrunchies and why, um, yeah, I just used the tutorial from like, a, it was literally just a little pamphlet thing that you, there's like a wall in Spotlight, I don't know if it's in every, every Spotlight, but at my Spotlight there's like a DIY wall and they have like these little flyers that you can rip off and it has, um, like just DIYs on it and I took one of those home and <laughs> that's how I started making scrunchies, but I've changed mine over time obviously, like I've added a heat more fabric and yeah just change the way I make them would you ever hire employees uh if your business grows too much for you to handle alone um I don't really want to hire anyone just because I know the costs involved <laughs> in hiring someone like you got to think about you know superannuation and stuff like that I possibly would contract someone um but yeah even then I don't know or maybe a casual, maybe. But then again, I, I don't know if I'd work with someone I don't know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I like much prefer working with like people that I know. Like, I've definitely been known to like pay my friends and stuff. Like, if they want to just give me a helping hand every like every now and again, and like Reese or something, if he wanted to help help me, like I'll just pay him. But like off the books sort of thing. Like just give him some money or like, you know, shout down or something. I don't know if I'd go like full on employee sort of thing. Just cause I want to keep it like in home. I want to, I want to keep it like in my house, um, business sort of thing. I don't know. Um, Hi Taylor, are you thinking about getting your own studio office or for your workspace? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, this this space I'm in right now is a temporary space. Um, I have said that from the start. Uh, I am building, not yet, <laughs> but I will be building. And when I do build, I will build like a proper proper space for my business. Um, quite a large space. Uh, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting to see what the future has in store for me um, with like Reese and stuff or just like the prices around here right now. I'm sort of waiting for them to burst because if I purchased like when Reese purchased like a year ago, like it would be half the price as it is now. Like the prices are through the roof around this area. So I'm sort of hoping that they're going to burst, but I don't know. And I also would love to purchase land on the farm, um, like my family's farm that would be ideal and that 
looks like it may be a possibility um, with the council. They've like made changes to uh, farming land and stuff and the way you can purchase land. So that could possi be a possibility too. Also, all my comments are so jumbled. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what's different with the sewing machines? Okay, so <laughs> if you're purchasing one of these, get the cheap one. Uh, this isn't the 4412 or something. This is the 442. Three, two, and that's the four, four, two, three, I think. Or maybe it's the other way around. It might be the other way around, actually. Um, but what, it, like, that one's, like, the middle. And that's, like, the higher one. Uh, like, 700 and 600, I think. I think, I think, I think. But the only difference between this one and that one is that this one has, like, 10 less stitches. <laughs> that's it. If I knew that, I would have purchased another one of these. But I purchased that one instead because... It said it had an automatic needle thread out and I was like, oh, it must be like automatic, it must be like a button. But no, it just means like it has a pull down tab, which this one already has. So, I don't know, I got, yeah, yeah, oh well, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, did you get 13? And I would say that's in reference to the phone. Yeah, I did. Um, I got it on pre-order, pre pre-sale, pre-whatever. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and it came in the mail Monday last week. So I've had it for a week now. Um, the the image quality is like insane. Like I, the videos and stuff, really high quality. Um, I was really surprised. I can't say the battery life's very good though. Like, um, I don't know. I've had to like charge my phone during the day. Whereas when I got the phone that's um, on right now, uh, which is the iPhone 10, I remember when I got that, it lasted like a day or two without charging like I was able to like not charge it overnight and uh it still have enough charge in the morning to like do what do everything and I would have to charge it maybe like throughout the day but yeah this one just dies quick uh yeah I need to figure out what why that would be but yeah Have you seen making it on 10? Uh, I haven't, sorry. Do you do Christmas markets as well as normal markets? I usually do Christmas markets, but with COVID and everything, um, I don't know if they're gonna go ahead, but I am scheduled to do two to three markets starting from the first week of November every single week. Wish me luck. Yeah, I'm booked in um, so much. Like, a lot of them are Friday nights and Sundays, so I do have a day in between, but then others are, like, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, and then, yeah, others are Saturday, Sunday. Like, I think there's only one week, weekend in that, I don't know, space between start of November to mid-December where I only have one market. The rest, I have two or three. Um, this may have already been answered, but, um, Bianca says my needle thread is struggling, struggling to pick up my bobbin thread and keeps getting stuck. I mean, it probably depends on your machine. If it's like one that has one of those casings, maybe try like, um, cleaning out any lint, um, re-threading everything, changing the thread, changing the bobbin. Um, completely. You try changing the needle. There's lots of different things you could try doing, I suppose. Um, but if it's like in the casing, I can't even remember what a casing is, like how it works. You might have to try and do something with the casing if it's getting stuck and breaking. Depends on what sort of, yeah, if you have a casing or if it just goes straight in the machine.
are cotton scrunchies good? I like cotton scrunchies. Um, like, I do have preferences over other scrunchies, but cotton scrunchies do hold their shape a lot better than, say, rayon, um, like viscose sort of stuff. Yeah, there's so many people from all around the world. Thank you. Um, Taylor, do you have a favourite accessory to wear? Yeah, my XL scrunchie in the satin. I have one in ivory and I have one in grey. Um, I wear those all the time. Um, I also have a new product. So, um, I actually had like a request from someone that wanted to wholesale these. Um, and I thought... No, I should probably make these as a regular line because I actually really like them. But they're skinny scrunchies. So I use my 12mm elastic in these and yeah, they're super comfy. Um, and I found them really good for gym. Not that I'm going to the gym, but I have been going for walks and stuff. Uh, so yeah, um, these will be coming to the store very soon. And I, I really like them. Like they're really cute. And I use the burrito method for this one as well. Um, so I kept the OG method for all my normal sizes and then the burrito for my XLs and then I'm going to do burrito for the skinny ones. I was going to call them minis but I've already got a range called minis so I don't want to confuse people so I'm just going to call them skinnies I think. <laughs> skinny scrunchies because <laughs> they're skinny. I don't know. But I don't know if that's like not a good terminology to use as well. I don't know. I haven't come come up with an idea for uh, the name for that one or like the name I'm definitely going to be using. Do you recommend doing things like markets if you want to grow? Yeah, of course. Like markets are a great way to get out in your community and um, get your name out there. There's been so many markets I've been to where maybe I haven't sold a lot, but I've given out my business cards to a lot of people. A lot of people have like looked and then later on, like I'll have purchases from like my town or like the different town that I was in or very close by. So you'd assume that it was from that market. So yeah, it was, it was good. I would definitely recommend. I'm still 12 minutes behind in uh, comments, sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for all the lovely comments. I'm really bad at pronouncing names, so I won't say specific names, but thank you. I am reading them. Uh, do you put white elastic in any scrunchie size or just the big ones? I put white elastic in all my scrunchies except my mini scrunchies, which are about that big. They're really small. All my skinny ones. Um, I do have an option... If you want to, I can put thin elastic in. Uh, white elastic is best for normal to thick hair, and then thinner elastic's better for finer hair. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know, I just specialize in white elastic. <laughs> Do you have a favorite shop to get all your fabric from? Uh, yes, Spotlight. <laughs> And what's the best fabric for scrunchies? I really like satin, um, but there's different sorts of satin. Uh, I have no idea what sort of mix this one is, but that one's a really good satin. Like it doesn't fray as much and it doesn't pull easily. Like some satins you like barely touch with your fingers and it just pulls at any anything, you know? So. Simone's onto it. Yes, this is the boyfriend fabric. I'm pretty sure you helped me name that one, actually. <laughs> so yes, that's the boyfriend fabric. Someone has ordered that one, so I'll have to make that. Um, I already sort of answered this question a little bit, but I'll just extend onto it. Will you look at getting your own studio? Um, I wouldn't buy, like I wouldn't rent a warehouse or anything. 
Um, I just don't see that happening for me in the future. Um, just for personal preference, I'd rather it be in my backyard sort of thing. Um, but when I do build, I'll definitely have it either attached to the house or have like a granny flat, but like, or a shed or something like a very decent sized one. Um, because I will be buying land as well. So I'll be on a, like an acre or two or five or 10. So that's just like the plans. Um, but in saying that it won't be for a little while yet. Um, like I've obviously definitely outgrown this space. I was already outgrown it before I moved in. Uh, <laughs> I already knew that, but, um, I did want to be closer to Reese and obviously look after Flo as well while he's away. Um, are you still in lockdown due to Corona? Uh, right now at this very point in time, I am in lockdown. Uh, tomorrow I won't be for La Trobe area. <laughs> so like there's Victoria, which is the state. And then there's like Melbourne, which is like the city area. So that's still in lockdown and like Greater Melbourne. Uh, that's still in lockdown or at least like still got really harsh restrictions. Regional is mostly out of lockdown, except a couple spots like us. Uh, we had a few outbreaks from the grand final. So um, yeah, we got put in lockdown for a week and we come out tomorrow morning or well, at 11.59 tonight. Um, but yeah, I don't know around the rest of the state who's in lockdown. I think New South Wales, I don't know. <laughs> I can't keep up with all these lockdowns. There's so many. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully it's, we're not going to go back to lockdown anytime soon. Oh, Sophie said, if I'm ever in Vic, I'm happy to help. I can't wait to come visit you. Oh my gosh. So me and Sophie and Reese, like Reese was a part of it sort of, but you know, I was also really wanting to see Sophie. But I was going to fly up to Queensland to go visit Soph. Soph has her own scrunchie business, April Scrunchies. Uh, and we've been friends for like so long now. We met through the businesses. Like we met because she sells scrunchies and I sell scrunchies. <laughs> That's how we met. And I just, oh, we're like best friends. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to come up to Queensland with Reese. We're having a holiday and I'm going to come see you. I'm going to come to your markets. We'll make a big vlog about it. And then lockdown. <laughs> and then I booked again. And then lockdown. <laughs> So I booked twice now and both times have been cancelled. Ah, so hopefully, probably starting like in January or February, I'll finally get to meet Sophie in person. She lives in Queensland, I live in Victoria. That's about, is it 20 hour drive? I think it's about 20 hours. Yeah, can we just say thank you, Sophie, for um, messaging me and like letting me know of all this stuff that's going on in the chat <laughs> and trying to moderate as well. So thank you very much. She is an absolute gem. Uh, what's your favorite material pattern you have found? Well, probably this one. It's one of my OG OG ones. Like I've had this fabric for so long. I had to literally call up um, a heap of spotlights to find the rest of it. Where did my stick go? There it is. Um, let me just flip it out for you so you guys can see. I think it's called the Prairie Prairie Rayon. Like rayon isn't my favorite. I actually don't really like rayon, um, but I really like its print. So it's like mustard with like little um, blue flowers. <laughs> But the thing is, I actually don't think I've ever worn it. Like, I love the print, but I don't think I've actually ever got my, like, made myself a Grace, which is what it's called, scrunchie. I don't think I ever have. I usually just go for, like, the plain colours and, like, silk. Oh, not silk. Satin ones. Um, or the velvets, really. You got me tearing up too, so <laughs> I'm mounting you for that one. <laughs> okay. What else we got on here? 
Um, where do you buy your materials and supplies? Um, it's like all of these are from Spotlight. Um, I don't really shop anywhere else because I like to go touch the fabrics and because I live in a regional area, it's kind of hard for me to go like into big fabric stores and especially because of coronavirus, <laughs> I haven't really been able to get down to Melbourne. I'd love to go down to Melbourne and like go to an actual store. Uh, if you have any recommendations on where I should go in Melbourne, let me know uh, for fabric. But yeah, I just, I haven't, yeah, really purchased from anywhere else. Spring flower once back in the day, but not anymore because it's so expensive now. Oh my God, it's like doubled in price, especially shipping. Um, other materials. Um, like I get like all my packaging stuff. I have like thank you cards, business cards, that sort of stuff from Vistaprint. Um, I have my Munbin printer, which I absolutely adore. That's from obviously Mumbin. I've used that to print out all my packaging stickers. Um, I just want to think. I'm looking around my room, like, what else do I have? I don't really share where I got my elastic from. I'm sorry. That's like the only thing I keep secret from you guys. Um, uh, that it? <laughs> There's heaps more things. Um, I don't even, I don't use any like good quad cotton or anything. I just use birch. Um, yeah, I don't use like Russell. Russell. <laughs> Taylor, have you watched Squid Game? Um, no, <laughs> I haven't. Reese started watching it offshore and he says it's awesome and I should watch it, but I feel like I'll get scared. Is it scary? Don't, no spoilers though. I might still watch it, but I don't know. It gives me like scary vibes for some reason. Uh, do you sew other things besides scrunchies like clothing, headbands and other fun accessories? Um... I have sewn some pants in the past, some of my mushroom pants, and then I also purchased some other material to make in the pants, but I just never got the chance to, I suppose. Um, I don't really sew for fun, I suppose. Like, I mean, when I do sew, I have fun anyway, but um, I'm, like, making stuff, like, to sell, I suppose. I don't really sell, um, sew to make things for myself or anything. Um, mostly because I'm terrible at sewing. Like, I know that's <laughs> funny to say, but, like, I'm horrible. I wouldn't be able to be a seamstress. I get a lot of people from my room talent just, like, always messaging me, like, oh, can you fix this? Oh, can you fix that? Can you make my dress smaller? I'm like, I'm not a seamstress. I have no idea how to do that. Trust me. <laughs> uh, what's your fave show? Um, I have so many. I really like Lost. <laughs> I know that's a weird, weird movie, or like a weird show to say, but I really enjoy Lost. Like, I really love how, like, weird it is. Um, I love Vampire Diaries. That's a good series. At the moment, I'm watching My Name is Earl, and that's on Disney+. Plus. I didn't think it'd be on there, but it is. Because um, my dad reminded me of how funny that was. He's like, oh... You know, I miss my name is Earl, so I'm going to have to tell him it's on Disney Plus because I didn't even know. It just came up. It must have been listening to me. Um, so, yeah. Hopefully, um, he'll be able to watch that soon as well. I don't know what else. What other shows? The Office. I feel like these are all very generic. <laughs> I don't watch a lot of um, TV show shows, I'm afraid. Um, I like animation. So, like, Simpsons. Are really good. Futurama, I got into for a bit. Oh my god, wait. Clickbait, clickbait. Oh my gosh, gosh. That, that's actually what it's called. It's on Netflix. You have, you guys have to watch that. That is amazing. Like, it just, it keeps you guessing the whole way through. Like, you're just like, this is it. This is who's done it. And then, no, no, it's not. I won't give you any spoilers, but oh my god, mind blown. Seriously, you gotta watch that. Clickbait. <laughs> I mean, Reese and I watched that the other night and like, I was just jumping in the bed. Like, I was like full jumping, like, oh my God, this is who's, this is what it is. This is what it is. Like, I figured it out. And then the next one, next uh, episode, you're like, no, that's not it. What? Oh, it's, ca it's crazy. It's good. It's good. <laughs> it was like quite, quite upsetting though, I suppose. Um, especially like at the end, but yeah. How do you set up wholesale and what do you charge? Um, usually for my wholesale orders, like someone will just message me 
and I will send them my very generalized quote list. I just, yeah, I just have like, you know, what the product is and how much I charge at like the base rate, really. Um, yeah. And I just have minimum quantity as well. And I also have to charge GST because I'm a GST registered business. Uh, and I also say that I charge shipping. And then like, I also have like, um, just like a little spiel. I, I don't really have many restrictions with my wholesaling. Like a lot of people um, are very strict on wholesaling, uh, a lot of other businesses, but I, I don't really mind. Like, I don't mind if you like charge less or charge more or whatever. Like, I don't really mind about that sort of stuff. Um, and I don't really mind where you sell it. Yeah. Like it's not a big deal to me. And like, I wouldn't even mind for like white labeling. Like I've done white labeling before, which is when you don't add your tags. I've even done tags for other businesses before. Although I don't know if I'll do that again. Cause that did take a bit, bit more time. <laughs> um, yeah. When is Sophie going to do more YouTubes? I know, right? I miss Sophie's YouTube channel. Bring it back. <laughs> Oh, here we go. I'm hoping to come, make a comeback in November. Okay. Hopefully Sophie starts posting again in Nob. Because, yeah, go go give um, Sophie, the moderator from April Scrunchies, a subscribe. Quick shout out to my girl. <laughs> she has good videos. Um, do you recommend the singing machines behind you? Uh, it depends what you're doing. 100% straight out. Like, 100, like, if I had to choose, I'd probably choose this one to recommend because it's a lot less, uh, it's a lot smoother, whereas these are clunky and not as smooth and, I don't know, they're just, they're not the same. Um, I would recommend them if you're just sewing straight and, you know, you want to go fast. These are 1,100 stitches per minute, whereas this one's only about 600, 700 stitches per minute, so it's almost double that one. Um, so in terms of that, you know, um, they are a good machine. I do. I love my machines. I love these. But yeah, I'm, I'm a bit iffy on the... Yeah, if you're going to use it for anything else other than straight stitch. <laughs> um, that's for sure. And I wouldn't call it heavy duty. Uh, no, they're not. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to sew anything thicker than like, you know, a couple millimetres <laughs> with those things. Maybe with a different needle, possibly. Um... Okay, I don't, what's that sticking me? I'm sorry, I don't know what the sticking means. I'll, I'll probably get down to it eventually. Um, oh, and I'm also going to get an industrial machine. So I've been talking to Sophie about this. Um, I've been, who have I been watching? Uh, Tina, Tina uh, from, oh my god, XXL Scrunchies and is it Angela Jasmina? Or is it, yeah, Angela? I think it's Angela. They both have Dukey machines, but they're different ones. So I've been looking at those. One's about two grand, and one's about two four in Oz dollars. Um, yeah, I've been looking at them ones. I'm sort of swaying towards Tina's though, because it's a bit smaller um, in comparison to the size and weight of the one that um, Angela, I think it's Angela, God, I'm so bad with names, Angela has, but yeah, I'm considering. <laughs> um, the one Angela has goes 5,000 stitches per minute. Oh, I wish. Yeah, but I just don't have the space for it. It's uh, it, like, it actually is inbuilt to a table. Like, it's a proper industrial machine. Like, it's got, you know, you've got to oil it. It looks scary, honestly. It's a scary looking machine because, like, I'm used to, like, these little tiny things. Um, whereas, I think Tina's semi-industrial. But it's still, like, really, like a really good machine. It's dookie. Um... And it, but it only goes 1,500 stitches per minute, which I know that's still a lot, but I feel like if I'm going to be spending, you know, two grand, I probably should get the, like, faster one. But, I don't know. So, yeah, I'm still debating, but for my situation right now, I think I'd have to go with, I think it's the, what, the Juki 2010? I don't know, the little, I think it's, is it T something? 2010? Um, I think I'll have to go with that one, though. Uh, but that one is a little bit more expensive, um, but it can it's like kind of portable. I'd have to get a new table though, and I'd have to change this room around slightly because, as you can tell, uh, it's full already, so there's not really much room in here, uh, especially for uh, another machine. 
So, I don't know. But yeah, that's on my list of things to get. Hopefully, a um, little Christmas present for myself, maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, I've been looking at both of them machines. Um, but yeah, that, that's not to say that I haven't I haven't decided either. Like, I've been looking at Juki cause, just because literally the only, like, I only follow or subscribe to, like, five people on my business page thing, my, my Talleros. Um, and they include Tina and Angela and Sophie. Um, Sophie doesn't have the industrial, but the other two do. And so that's why I've looked at those machines because they're people that I know what they do and I, and I feel like, oh yeah, I trust them with their reviews. I don't know. Cause like, I feel like I know them. Um, which is weird cause I, I have never really spoken to, I, I, Angela actually did comment on my live once. So I have spoken to her once. Maybe. Um, and Tina did comment on one of my YouTube videos back in like a couple months ago. So I sort of spoke to both of them maybe, but not not fully. But I feel like I know them more than like watching a random person <laughs> uh, do a review on any of the machines. Oh my god, I just keep going on tangents. We're 20 minutes behind in comments now, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's the burrito method? So... There's, um, there's a heap of different ways to do scrunchies, but a burrito method is pretty much your folding. Hang on, let me grab, I have heaps behind here. So, you pretty much have a long strip. I've already sewn this one a little bit. So you sew together at the ends. And then what you do is you fold it in just the top layer and then you fold that over and that's where you sew all the way down here without touching that middle part and then once you like start going and you're sewing it becomes a little tube like this and then what you do is you put your finger like you leave a little gap to be able to pull it out and you put your finger in and yeah it comes out like that so that's the burrito method Usually I do my OG method, which is, this is a uh, two scrunchies in one, by the way, but yeah. So it's just a tube. So that's my OG method, which is, stands for original, um, just because that's how I learned. And I, I just decided if you want to go back and watch um, my OG burst burrito, that might give you a bit more idea on like why I chose what I did. But burrito is really good as well. One twelve in Hawaii AM. Gosh, we've been, already been on for an hour and a half, and it feels like it's been ten minutes, guys. <laughs> My goodness. I'm probably keeping Sophie up past her bedtime. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sydney comes out of lockdown on Monday. Well, that's really good. Yeah, they've been locked down for ages. I'm so behind in these comments. Oh my God, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> I know, I should just surprise Sophie and just go. I should just, yeah. I won't even tell her I'm coming. No, that's what my plan was originally. I did not want to say that I was coming. I just wanted to just arrive. And I wanted to arrive on one of her market days or like close to her market day. So then I could just rock up and be like, hey. <laughs> and like her be like, you know, I'd probably never cry. I would, actually, I 
I really feel like I'd cry when I meet Sophie. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it's it's going to be an emotional time. <laughs> Sophie's doing such a good job of moderating. We both don't know what we're doing. So, yeah, she's done great. I just threw her into the moderation position. <laughs> she, did not, she did not ask for this. <laughs> I was just like, hey, you want to do this? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this will be saved to my channel so you can watch um, me get spammed in the comments later. <laughs> By those random people. Yeah, no, it'll be saved. Maybe I'll cut that part out. I think you can actually do that. Maybe I'll just, like, cut that section out of the video. Um, Zoe, this is what I use. My scrunchie flipper. It's what my dad made for me. Um, God, that must be like when I first started making scrunchies. That's been so long. Oh my goodness. That's like four years ago. But yeah, um, it's, I have this on my channel. Search flip stick. Yeah, that's a scrunchie turner. Ooh, darn cheap fabrics in Vic. New fit story. I'll have to go check it out. Let's go. I'm just going to screenshot that now so I don't forget. <laughs> Thanks, Chloe. I feel like I don't have an accent. I just talk really fast. I don't know if that's an Australian thing or just a tail thing. <laughs> But I can I can see I can see where people think I have an accent. <laughs> Carolyn from the UK. Hello. So Maureen, you should get a website and a YouTube channel. I'd love to watch you. Yes, okay, thermal printer, mum bin, it's over here but I can't believe moving the thing. Maybe I'll go grab it, I'll go grab it. I've actually put it in a spot now, like it didn't used to have a location, it used to just go back in its box every time I used it, but now it's sitting on my desk. Um, so affordable thermal printer, like it is still expensive, like it's still $200 or two something. Um, but they're 100% worth every penny. So this is my Munbin one. I've just got the paper sitting on top. Looks like this. I think it's a really stylish design. I absolutely adore it. Like, it's the best thing ever. Um, I make all my packaging stickers with it. Let me show you that too, just in case you're new. Um, let me find them. So you can get oh, these from um, Munbin as well. So I make these stickers here. Let me just get you close to the camera. I'm lagged behind, so I need to wait here. So that's what I make. They go on my parcels, like, to close them, like a tape sort of thing. And then I have my circle stickers, which look like that. So I printed out the whole 750. Um, it took me a bit to figure out how to do it, but if you watch my video on how to print on circle paper, you would be fine uh, because I figured out how to do like all the measurements and stuff. It was the fact that it has like a little guide at the back, has like little black things here that you move across. Uh, I didn't know that was a thing. So that was my issue with printing with the uh, circle stickers. I couldn't figure out what I was doing. But yeah, I'll definitely recommend the Mungbin thermal printer. And there's also discounts. Um, Monbin gave me a new discount code. It should work. I don't know. They only gave it to me last week. Um, they said it worked for the printer. They said it did. Um, it should be like 16% off, I think. But, I mean, you can also use Honey Discounts and find a code that way as well. Which Honey Discounts, just in general, is really good. Um, not just for, like, business stuff. Like, most business stuff you probably won't be able to get Honey Discounts for, but... Other stuff like, you know, clothing and whatever, Honey Discounts is like a application you can install. You can install on Safari, Chrome, or you can just download as an app. Um, it just finds discount codes for you. Okay. 
Okay, I'm nearly 20 minutes behind in the comments. <laughs> I also had a really nice comment from, I'm going to say Tegan Jade, I think, Miss Tegan Jade. Um, yes, I do get my packaging, my boxes from EB Packaging. Definitely recommend them as well. I have just placed another order. I've got 700 more boxes coming. Like, I didn't used to use boxes. I used to use a lot of uh, the envelope mailers, but because of the XLs, the hair claws, and just Bigger orders in general, like I didn't used to have so much, so such a big orders. I used to only get like one or two scrunchies purchased, and that was like it. But now my bar, my basket value is like forty or fifty dollars, whereas before it was like ten. So yeah, but yeah. Now I'm just using bigger boxes, so I need a lot more boxes because usually with the um, envelope mailers. You get so many uh, in, you know, smaller lots. Like when you purchase them, they come in like pack of 600, whereas the boxes only come in like pack of 200, 300. Um, does your family support you in your business, like sharing work at all? Uh, they don't. Um, and that's okay. Like mum works full time, so, and like dad, Dad's a blokey bloke. I can't imagine him <laughs> doing anything besides like uh, fixing my displays and stuff, like more outdoorsy stuff. Um, but yeah, but no, that's okay. They don't have to help me. They do support me though. So like they may not um, work physically with my stuff, but they do hundred percent. They're behind. They've been behind me since I started, they've, they've been support, so supportive of my business and me wanting to make my own decisions in life. Like they never tried to force me to do anything. Um, they were always very happy with any decisions I made for myself and made for my future. So like, yeah, they never like wanted me to, um, you know, force me to go to university or stay in university or, you know, do that sort of stuff. Oh, thank you so much, Bella, for sending me five dollars. What kind of fabric do you use for your masks? I use 100% cotton, uh, usually from the quilters section in Spotlight or the Poplin. Um, I get asked this a lot to show my method for making them, but like the way that I first made my masks, I didn't watch a tutorial, right? <laughs> so I was just like, oh yeah, here's a template. Cool. Let's just make it. This is how you make it in my head. And then I made it. And then I started making them and selling them. And then it was probably only like three or four weeks later after I'd sold seven or 800 of them, I actually watched a tutorial. And I know how you make them. <laughs> They're like completely different. And the way I'm making them is so much harder and takes probably a bit longer. Um, so I wouldn't really want to share how I make them because I don't know, I just feel like there is a lot of better options out there to make them but because I've already made like over probably 1500 masks now in this method this is just how I'm doing them um I have changed my template as well like my template's my own now I changed it probably a month ago or maybe a month and a bit ago and I much prefer it like it fits so much snugger around the nose and everything like I now like if I have have two masks in the car and one of them you know maybe 
One of them matches my outfit, but it's the old version, and the other one doesn't match my outfit, but the new version, I pick up the new version every time, because it just, it fits so much better. Um, but yeah, I actually made that template myself, so I don't even know how I would share that. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm glad you're actually working as well. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for roping you into this. <laughs> Whoops. Got another Minnesota on. I think we had one earlier in the... Um, Live stream, I said vlog. <laughs> oh, awesome! Um, I'm gonna guess Emily. M Rad. Is it Emily? Oh, can't remember. I'm terrible at names, but yes, I did remember making that dinosaur bow. Um, customer ordered like a little dino bow. So if you've watched some of my recent vlogs about my website, I decided to upload my bows, but um, have custom request or have them so have them so like they're numbered and like they weren't actually made um but yeah this customer wanted the dino bow which is dinosaur print let me find it do i have it oh i don't have it back here because i've got barely any left it's in a, it's in a box in a special box which has all my like little pieces um but yeah and she bought it and like she clipped it on for her son's first birthday so yeah oh that's so cool thank you Um, I've already like answered this earlier, but they are good machines, but yeah, they're they're different to other machines. Um, I know they're just clunky, but they are really good machines. I they're good machines. <laughs> they go fast, so you should on in straight line or like mostly straight lines. It's so good. Um Oh, thank you, Pam. I sent her a scrunchie kit because her parrot breaks all her hair ties and now she wears scrunchies. He tries to break them but can't. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, no, I don't make my hair claws like these things. They come from, like, China. Yeah. They come from overseas. Oh my god, we're almost at the end of the um, comments. Like I can't even scroll now. Okay, what uh, what do you print the labels on with the Dymo? You can like for any label printing, you can print on thermal paper. Um, so like label thermal label printers use like heat, like sort of like a receipt roll. Um, but it depends on the paper you get. But like the Mundoon print uh, paper, and I'm probably the Dymo as well, is higher quality. So the prints don't fade very quick. I was reading somewhere that they last for years, but I don't know. Um, like my, when I got my mum being, how long ago was that? Three months, four months? And my stickers I made um, pretty much on the day that I got it, uh, they're still fine. Like they're still perfect. But yeah, um, Julia said you can find the labels on Amazon. Amazon definitely. Um, I get mine from eBay. But I did notice the quality difference with the eBay ones versus the Mundin. Mundin's so much better in quality. So, yeah, it just depends on what you want. Like, for my packaging stickers, um, I'll definitely go and purchase more Mundin ones. Because, yeah, there is a quality difference. Have you used Liverpool fabric? It's really good. I actually feel like Liverpool fabric is not as available here as it is in the US. Like I see so many people using it for bows in the US, but I've never seen it here. Um, unless I'm just looking in the wrong spots in the spotlight or whatever, but I honestly have never even seen it. 
or felt it here. I've only seen it like at Kmart. Like if you go to Kmart and look at their bows, they have some. Um, what markets do you go to? Um, I go to Merbu North. Um, now I'm having a blank. Sale market, the the craft one, not the uh, the other one. <laughs> um, there's a heap coming up in Melbourne if they are allowed to go on. But we've got Pakenham. Um, born local markets, which is at Berwick. Um, I think I've got one in Hayfield, a couple in Hayfield coming up as well, which is the other way. Um, what else have we got? When I say we, I mean me. Muradook Station, I have no idea what that is though. Don't even know. <laughs> I just know it's Muradook Station, that's what it's called. Um, that's with Unrivaled Events. Where else have I booked in? I've got a couple in Mornington Peninsula with Craft Markets Australia. Um, and I've got one in sale with Craft Markets Australia. I feel like I have a Christmas one. But I can't remember. Like a proper Christmas one. That's true. Apparently Dymo labels, like you have to, Dymo machines have specific labels that you can use, whereas Mindboon you can really use any labels, um, like off-brand labels, and they say that on their website and stuff. But yeah, I have heard that Dymo you have to like uh, use specific, like their brand or like, there's another brand I've seen people comment on stuff, I can't remember what it is. Hi, what app do you use to draw with your iPad? Uh, Procreate, yeah, Procreate's good. I think it's like twelve dollars or ten dollars or something. Ten ninety nine. It's really worth it though. Like you can do so much with it. Okay, so yeah, you can use off-brand labels, but they have to have a slit somewhere. Dash up brand for Dymo. I was thinking about getting a Dymo, um, but yeah, and then I saw Munbin and how like they have all the stickers, and that really drew me in, especially because it was like half the price of a Dymo for Excel. Like it does come from China, but I mean I got it within ten days or something 10 days it was like a week and a half it was so quick got Sierra watching from Ireland I probably should watch Squid Game it, like everyone's it, it's sort of like um what's all the like Ted Bundy everyone was like all crazy about him and everyone's like oh watch this and now everyone's like oh watch Squid Game Um, Rhonda, my brand is Munbin. Uh, they are, yeah, Munbin. M-U-N-B-Y-N. That's the brand I have, and I really love it. That's Switzerland. I feel like all my comments don't pop up, so sorry if I do miss your stuff. <laughs> Yeah, shipping is really slow here at the moment too. Apparently the US has stopped shipping to Australia. <laughs> like I heard, I've heard that around the rumor mill um, and I actually saw news reports on it that yeah, they've stopped shipping to us. Um, yeah, I saw it in all the Etsy groups. I mean, I can still ship to US though, so I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah. But it's mostly like all backed up because 
uh, Sydney or like New South Wales and Victoria, like two big massive states, have been in lockdown for so long, and like everyone's online shopping and like getting everything delivered. So it's like so much worse than Christmas time, apparently. Like there's like pictures circulating of like the warehouses just absolutely full. And like they've had, yeah, it's just been an absolute nightmare of you. Like, I've been pretty lucky with my parcels. Like, I haven't really had to wait too long to receive stuff. Um, but, like, some of the other things, like my elastic uh, got delayed, I think, for two or three weeks. Yeah. So, yeah, I think most people are understanding, though. Like, I think because it's not just, you know, it's the small business fault. It's, you know, everyone... Like, it's not just one person that's, you know, having delays. That's everyone's having delays. So I feel like I haven't really received many, like, people saying, hey, I haven't, you know, received my order. I think everyone's very understanding. I've been trying to add, a, like, upgrade a lot of uh, orders to tracking as well because of that reason. Um, even if they haven't paid for it. Like, it depends, like, it depends on what they've ordered, how much it was. But, um, yeah, I have been upgrading a lot of stuff to tracking. Sophie says, maybe I should come to your markets and surprise you instead, except I would probably get lost in regional Vic. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, regional Vic's boring. Like, Queensland's so much fun. I'll, I'll, come, I'll come to you. <laughs> Don't you worry. It'll probably be cold too by the time you get here. Oh, stop shipping to New Zealand. Why is that? Like, what? Why? Is it because, like, the planes and stuff? There's just not enough... Uh, not enough going over. That's so strange. I thought it must have been because of the lockdowns. Um, how much of a fabric do you usually buy at a time? Uh, usually, usually, I buy at well. I used to only buy a meter. Now I buy two meters if I think it's going to be popular. And if I put it online and, it, you know, it looks like it's going to be popular, then i go back and buy more. And then for stuff that is continuously popular, I'll just keep purchasing more over time. And if I go, if I see it on clearance, I'll buy the whole lot and I'll try and get it from every other store close to, to, close to me. That's what I did with the Peru one, um, which is like the mustardy flower one. I like bought eight meters or something, which that is a lot um, for scrunchies. Like, I think I can make 16 scrunchies out of a metre, uh, just normal size. But my XLs, I can only make six. So it depends on what it is for as well. For, like, my XL scrunchies, I have a specific range of uh, fabrics. And I usually purchase quite a lot. Like, I'll purchase nearly the whole roll. Um, but, yeah. I feel like you can never have not uh, too much fabric though. Yeah, so if you'll have to come see all the cows. <laughs> I have a um I have another friend from Melbourne. Um we met. Uh so I did a design class, uh, like a design certificate back in school. And this was in Melbourne. So I traveled to Melbourne every Wednesday and I met this girl on the stairs. <laughs> we walked up together, we did not say a word to each other. I was so nervous and I think she was too. And we went inside and we sat next to each other. I listened so hard for her name, but her name ended in an A, like her first name. Oh, her first name started in an A. So it was the first name that got called, of course. And of course, I wasn't like clued on. I was like, oh, wait, no, I should listen for her name. So like, I'll remember it. I didn't. So I had to grow some courage and ask her what her name was. <laughs> her name was Olivia. Um, so yeah, Liv. And me um, became very good friends over the course of the year. 
um, when we were at White House Design. I think we got a certificate three. <laughs> I don't know. Certificate of something in design. Um, but yeah. So where was I going with this? Right. She came and visited me um, for my 19th birthday. And because she's not from Melbourne, there's like not a lot of cows around there. Uh, she's also vegan. But she loved all my cows so much. It was so cute. And like every time, like we, we went uh, for her birthday, we went to like another sort of regional area and there was cows along the way. And like she had to get out and get photos with the cows. It was, <laughs> she's adorable. Um, so yeah, I, cause I like live on a farm with cows. So uh, I'm, I'm used to the cows. Whereas I feel like that would be you so I feel like you'd be like, whoa, there's cows. <laughs> do you have cows? Like, do you see, have you seen a cow, Sophie? I feel like, yeah, because, like, you're from the city. I feel like you wouldn't have seen, like, animals, like, farm animals, that sort of thing. <laughs> Let me know. I want to know if you've seen, seen a cow. Lucky face is not an answer. Well, have you seen a cow? <laughs> I can come show you my, my cattle. <laughs> Giftsland, yeah. Giftsland is a really nice um, place. Like, it's really pretty. There's definitely a lot of beautiful places to go. I find... Like, my favourite drive would be going from, like, Glengarry to, um, where is it? Like, Mafra? I think Mafra. Or, or Haytham. I don't know. Somewhere around, along that way. But in the springtime, they have, like, these beautiful flowers everywhere. Oh, so pretty. I loved Brisbane so much when I went. I went there a couple of years ago. Um, oh God, it was beautiful. If it's if it's Brisbane, I'm talking about, it would have to be because we. Um, I call it like a. What do you call them? Big ships. The big cruise ships. Um, yeah. So we we docked in um, Brisbane. I think. I think it would have to be. Yeah, it would have to be Brisbane. But it's beautiful. There's like here's these bin chickens. You know those bin chickens, like all the memes? I know that I ibis birds. I I've never seen an ibis bird in my life. And there were so many. Oh, I got some birds with them, they were great. Um <laughs> they were so funny. Um but it was just such a beautiful, clean city. Like it was so much better than Melbourne. I don't know. I just I just found it so beautiful. I don't know if it was like just the weather, um, weather and like we went to like this park and then like there was actual food growing in the park. Like there was like I don't know, like little plants and stuff, and like it's like, oh, please take some, you know. And I was like, this sort of stuff wouldn't wouldn't be in Melbourne. Um, and there was like live bands and everything. There was a market, and I was like, oh my god. And I feel like it wasn't even a weekend. I think it was just a Thursday night. It was a typical Thursday night, and there was just so much going on. It was so pretty and just beautiful. I definitely definitely want to go back there. Um, what's your upload schedule like? Um, so I upload every Thursday, um, Australia, in Australia, um, Thursday night. And that's usually between 7 and 11 p.m. Um, so like around this time, whatever, whatever time it is in your time, it's around this time minus like three or four hours in between that. Um... It, I should really get a particular time and date, but at the moment, I'm just, I always rush my YouTube's videos, unfortunately. <laughs> Have you considered making the double layer scrunchies? I tried to make some for my launch, uh, my website launch. I was going to make my pom-pom ones with double layers, but I found it, the way I made them didn't work. I have to put a lot more tulle um, over, like, the satin. 
So I would make him again, give him another go. But yeah, at the moment, probably a bit busy. But yeah, I'll, I would like to do, I'll do like a satin with the tulle over the top. Yeah, I think um, one of the comments says my boyfriend's family were dairy farmers. I think the, like, my farm, when I say my farm, it's my family's farm. But I think that used to be dairy, like, way back in the day. I think. <laughs> like, there's a dairy shed, like, a, and there's heaps of, um, like, they had, like, these old milk things, um, like, jug, not jugs. They were, like, metal, <laughs> metal things, and, like, they put milk in them. And there's heaps, like, there's probably 100, 200 just all sitting in a pile and all these trees have grown through them. It's really pretty. I've taken heaps of photos of it, but I wouldn't have any on this phone. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. Switzerland mountains. That'd be so cool. Um, what breed of cattle do you have? Now, this is a great question <laughs> because I don't know. <laughs> Um, I have actually been asked this question before by uh, someone else because they were into like um, cows and stuff and I was like, I didn't even know there was different breeds. <laughs> like I do know the different breeds but like, yeah, I, I don't actually know. Um, it's actually my pop that runs everything on the farm. Like me, my dad, we don't really have anything to do with it. Um, yeah, with what he does. So <laughs> I don't know what they are. I actually have been told before what they are. Um, by someone that knows about cows. They told me, like, oh, this is what they are. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what they are. One of the big roundabouts on the Gold Coast, there's a farm full of cows and horses. The owner have refused to go off the land to the council. So, yes, I see them. Oh, my God, that's so cool. The only farm I see. We can come see my farm. <laughs> Yeah, I hope they don't give up the land to the council either. They can be so, like, um, nasty. I love bin chickens. Oh, bin chickens are, like, life. Seriously. <laughs> so funny. My partner is from Gippsland. He has a cow called MCF. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm glad they haven't given up giving the rent roundabout farm away. Um, how do you make the pole you turn the scrunchies on? Go check out my YouTube video after this. It's called the flip stick. Uh, it's about a six minute video. It just, I just explained how I use it and like how it was made. It's pretty simple. It's just like a piece of wood and then drill a hole, put a stick in, glue it in, pretty much. But I saw someone commented on that video, Go when you go have a look, someone's actually commented another place you can get something very similar to this. I think it was from Kmart and it's very similar. So go have a look um, after this or now if you like. Um, there was another question to that. Do you have any market tips? Um, yeah, sure. Let's have a think. <laughs> um, definitely invest in a FPOS machine. I recommend Square. They are really great to have because um, a lot of people do carry a card on them these days rather than cash. Um, although, in my experience, most of my customers do pay in cash still. I think it's because I live regional. Um, but, I mean, bigger markets in the city, I still get a lot of cash. Um, what else? I recommend signage. Signage is really important. Even if it's just, um, you know, off the print, I think they're like 20 or 30 bucks on sale. Like, they're pretty good. Um, just so people know your name. Like, it's really hard when you're, like, walking past and you're, like, you don't really want to go in. Like, a lot of people do this. They don't really want to go into a store, but they're kind of like, oh, who's that, you know? Um, if you have your name, like, plastered there really big, and like, you know, you got your socials on there, then they can go have a look later. 
um, without having to go up to the stall, you know, get a business card or talk to anyone. I find a lot of people do that. So um, a big sign really helps. Um, and they can be very cost effective as well. Like Vista Print have them very cheap. Like my massive sign I have, I think it was like 30 bucks. Like they were really cheap. Um, some other tips would be... I find like um, lighter color, like non-colored tablecloths to look best, but I, I don't know, that's just my personal opinion. Like I find like they make the products pop more, like if it's black or white or like ivory, whereas like if it's like an actual color, it can like, um, you lose the products in it, depending on what you sell, I suppose. But like um, colored tablecloths might also go with your aesthetic, so I guess it's kind of case by case. Really. Um, what else? Um, for big markets, I usually bring a second till. That's, yeah, just like, um, because for the bigger markets, I find a lot of people bring 50s. Like, they'll go and get a lot of cash out and they'll have a lot of 50s on them. Whereas uh, your small markets, you've got your change sort of thing. I like smaller notes. So, yeah, I usually bring a double till to um those sort of markets um yeah that's all i can think of right now <laughs> um have you ever considered or tried something like knitting or crocheting um i did knit when i was younger my grandma told me how to knit um and i did mention earlier in the vlog um the the supplies that i think i think my mom got it for me i was like eight or nine um that she purchased I gave it back to her this year, uh, my grandma, and she's knitted me this beautiful blanket out of those supplies and they're just so lovely. Like, I love the blanket. I love sentimental things like that. Like, my grandma also does um, little knitted scarecrows. They're like this big. Like, they are amazing. And I got one when I was a baby, but like my mum must, must have chucked it or it's gone gross or whatever. Um, so for my 21st birthday, I was like, grandma, all I want from you for my 21st is one of those uh, knitted scarecrows. So lo and behold, on my 21st birthday, she rocks up <laughs> with this beautiful scarecrow and it's like um, got like a little pink and purple jacket and a uh, little ladybug on its little hat. I don't know, if you've never seen them, go have a look. Type in like knitted scarecrow and they're just so adorable. Um, but yeah, I love that sort of thing. So I'd like, like to give that to like, my child one day or something um like a little hand like a uh, heirloom sort of thing it's really sweet but i haven't done crocheting i don't have the patience A knitting machine. Yeah, I've never even heard of those. That's that does sound fun. Paradise Country sounds beautiful. Can't wait to go visit it with yourself. And I guess we can let Reese tag along. <laughs> um, uh, how does the poll work? So, oops, what do we have? We have this one. Can you even see the top of the poll in this video? Not really. I have to put it down here. So, pretty. I do have a video on this. So, if you want to go watch it later, but pretty much you pop your finger in the tube don't drop it um and then you pop it over and sort of like make a pocket like that <laughs> this is really bad I, I have it so it's so much clearer on the video i have and then you sort of like pull down so like this part here is acting as like a barrier for it to come like completely slip off so then you like just pull and see how <laughs> it's like still on um it's like folded underneath I have a video on this it would be 
yeah, probably a lot easier to create look at a close up. But yeah, that's that's pretty much how I do that. Um, it does take a bit to get used to. Like when Reese helps me with the scrunchies, it did take him a little bit to get the hang of it. Um, how many bulk orders do you make in a week? So I usually get a couple wholesale orders a week. Well, not usually. I usually only get them a couple a month. But lately, <laughs> I've been getting two to three a week. Oh my god, it's so wholesome that there's more cows on the island compared to people. <laughs> oh. Cows are great. I yeah, I do especially love those uh I no idea what they're called. But they're the cute cows that are like all over TikTok. They have a specific name, but I can't remember. What colour are the cows? I have uh, a bunch of random colours. We've got white and black, we've got brown and white. Um they're ugly cows, like they're not pretty ones. <laughs> and they're not that big. I feel like they're they're cheap cows. If there's a cheap cow out there, it'd be them ones. Like they're not amazing. <laughs> oh my god, so goats. Goats are so great. Um when I was in school, uh I used to be able to drive to school because I had my license like a, for a year before like school ended. Um, so like in Australia, you, or in Victoria, in Australia, you get your license at 18. And in other states, you can get it at 17. Whereas I know in the US, isn't it like 16 or something? That'd be so cool. Um, and I mean like full license, not like you just, uh, you owls. Um, so I was able to drive by myself. Um, so I used to drive myself to school every day. And I used to take the back way because it was quicker. And nearly every day, there was this goat that would stand on this stool, like it was like a stump, a tree stump, and just stand there. And I used to think it was a statue until it moved one day, and I was like, oh my god. I, I so wanted to get out and take a photo. It was like, it made my day every time I saw it, seriously. It was so funny. Okay, so Adriana um, commented about the stick. It's a donut stand from Kmart. There you go. So yeah, if you don't want to make it yourself, you can buy one. Do you ship internationally? I do. Um, I do have different shipping prices for different places. Uh, it is quite expensive to ship internationally. So I do try and make it as cheap as possible, but it's still very expensive, especially if you're not part of Canada, US, New Zealand, or Asia Pacific region. If you're anywhere out of those <laughs> or out of that, um, it is quite expensive. Oh yeah, so I do ship to India and it is a lot cheaper than shipping to say, I don't know, Sweden. <laughs> Sweden or Switzerland, that sort of thing. Like that's so much more expensive to ship there rather than India. India is a bit cheaper. I saw on a video a while back that you were thinking about making scratchy earrings. I haven't done that. <laughs> um, pretty much everything from that video. So I was doing like trials of like different things that are really popular. The only thing that I've made from that video is the XL scrunchies. And I've sort of run with that because they've been selling so well. Um, there was the, the scrunchy earrings, which I was really interested in, and I have all the supplies to make them, it's just the time. And like the headbands, there's like a heap of different headbands, like adult headbands, baby headbands, all that sort of stuff. I just haven't had the time to make them. Like, I point to this corner because they're literally, um, uh, you probably can't even see. If we, if we move, oh, nearly knocked the thing off. I don't know if that will help. I don't know. In this corner... There's like a little corner here and right down the bottom there's spotlight bags and on top of the spotlight bags there's two boxes of um, packaging boxes and there's fabric and like piles of fabric. So right down the bottom there's all my supplies for making all my headbands. 
And I haven't even looked at it since I moved in here into this uh, area. So yeah, it is something I may make in the future, but at the moment I've just, yeah, it's a bit hard. Cause I'm just so busy. Are the markets and online sales your full-time job? Yes. Um, yeah, Made by Taylor is, is my full-time job. I quit my part-time job last year in August, I think, um, to pursue this full-time. And I also dropped out of university at the end of September, I think, last year um, as well to yeah pursue this and YouTube full-time. So... Yeah, when people ask me, I do. I say I'm a full-time business owner, full-time YouTuber. So I do both full-time, really. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't change that for the world. What's very slack for that? I don't know. <laughs> for him tagging along with us. Um, how much do you consider as a wholesale order? Um, my minimum quantity is 25 pieces, mostly for scrunchies. Um, I do have smaller minimum quantities for other things. Like, my minimum quantities are pretty low, I think, like, compared to other people. I'm just going to chuck this. Fifteen, uh, Margaret got her license at in USA. That's crazy. <laughs> That's so cool, though. That would have come in handy if I was able to get my license at 15. Living on a farm, um, like 10 minutes from town, it had its challenges. Especially like, you know, seeing friends and stuff. It was hard. Still like good. I've never changed living on a farm. It was great. But yeah, it was a bit hard to see people. I don't think they're Angus. I'll probably say they're Hereford. Hereford? Probably. Probably. Yeah, probably. I don't know. If, like, I feel like Angus is like a better better cow. I feel like our cow is probably Hereford. <laughs> uh. How many hours do you devote to this job? Yes, uh, it does take my whole day. Um, I usually work from either 8 or 9 a.m. until whenever I feel like quitting, like whenever I feel like going to bed or whatever, um, when Reese is away. But when Reese is home, um, I usually try and stop around 5 or 6 so then we can make dinner and like hang out. And also when Reese is home, I try and have some days off as well. Um, so when he's away, I'll try and smash out as much as I can, try and catch up with stuff. Um, and then, yeah. When he's back, yeah, we'll hang out and go on little adventures and stuff. Like, we went to, oh, where'd we go? When I said Port Douglas. It wasn't on Port Douglas. That was, like, off there. Um, <laughs> Queensland way. Uh, where'd we go? We went to Port something. Uh, I don't know. We just got on the car and drove with Flo, and we went there on Monday a couple weeks ago, and it was really nice. Like, we just spent the day together, and then the next day... Uh, we do something else and when he comes back we want to go to Lake's entrance um, because there's this massive board of food there's like a breakfast board and it has like everything it has like eggs bacon hash browns pancakes waffles like it's got everything on it so yeah we want to go there <laughs> um, but I don't know if we'll be able to because I think you have to be double vaxxed by then because um, I think I don't know if what Lake's entrance is included but like I know that, I think, I've heard, I've heard Latrobe is meant to be double vaxxed by like the 11th of October or something, um, to be able to do anything, <laughs> like, like, eat out or go and get your hair done, oh my god, don't even talk about my hair, oh, I have my hair appointment booked for when, no, for Tuesday or Wednesday last, Tuesday, Wednesday last week, and then we went to lockdown, and I have needed my hair done for months, and like every time I want to do it, we are in lockdown or there's no points available because um, my hairdresser is getting everyone else done before, because of all the lockdowns. So I don't even know if I'll be able to get it done. 
like I, I'll, be, I'll be double backs until end of October. And my regrowth is like down here at this point. I'm not even blonde anymore. So yeah, big sads. Um, do you ever use ads on IG for your business? I don't use any sort of ads, but in saying that I will be doing a video on me using ads. So I'll be using ads, like I'll be doing like a trial thing. I'll be using ads for a month or maybe six weeks. Um, I'll be using Etsy, Instagram, Google, uh, Google ads. And I, I don't know about Facebook ads, but yeah, I'll be spending quite a bit of money on the ads and seeing what happens. So I will keep you guys updated, but I just, I don't know when I'll be able to do that because October is usually my busiest month of the year and I don't really want to overwhelm myself. <laughs> and coming into November and December, you get a lot more people posting ads so your ads won't do as well. So I feel like I should wait till, I know it's so long away, like it feels so long away saying it, but I feel like I should wait till uh, January, February, March to do this test. Like ideally I wanted to do it in September because uh, I know that people aren't uh, pushing for Christmas just yet um, at that stage and like it just would have been better for me to do it in August, September. But yeah, I just didn't get around to it because I had the website to upload and yeah, I haven't fixed all the SEO yet. So and I had to do Etsy as well. Etsy took me a whole day just to change all the listings. That was such a challenge. But that's all done now, so that's good. Uh, so yeah, that is something I will be doing a video on, but when? I don't know. Hi Landers, fluffy brown with horns and speckle park. Black and white Dalmatians are the ones you should see on TikTok. That's about cows. Yeah, they're so cute. Um, do you have any tips for building a Shopify store the first time? Um, if, if you have the money and like, if you, if you see it more than a hobby, if you see your business, a, like a proper business and you want to, um, you know, make it look super professional, I'll definitely recommend getting a paid theme, but in saying that, it's definitely not something you have to do. Um, I didn't purchase a paid theme for over a year. But now that I have a paid theme, I think, wow, this looks so much better. But, you know, it just it depends on what stage you're at as well. Like, if you're only just starting out, you don't need a paid theme. But I would recommend it if you do want one in the future. They're awesome. Um, another thing to remember is that... Um, <laughs> Shopify is always available for t like to chat. Like, um, I had so much issues, so many issues with doing my s store recently. The first time I did my store, no issues, it was fine. This time I did my store, oh my god, there was just so many issues. So, um, they are always available, like any time of the day and night, and they're very quick to respond. So always um, know that you can reach out to them for support. There's also um, business groups like Shopify, I think it's Shopify Advice or something. You can you can like um, join those groups. They're really helpful as well. Um, my tips would be specifically with Shopify. Um, I think I lost my spot for a bit. Okay. Um, get Judge Me or another review app. Because uh, I don't actually have review apps or like review platform thingy on Shopify without having to add it. So Shopify has applications that you can add to your store, which makes it uh, better in some ways. So Judge Me is what I use and it's like a review service. So it will send out a notification to my customers and say, hey, you want to review this? And yeah, it's nice to, you know, wake up to some nice reviews. I actually haven't received any bad ones. I don't know if they filter bad ones. I'm not really sure. But I haven't actually received a bad one yet. So uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I've just got nice customers. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I definitely recommend getting an app like that. Um, they also have a Shopify version. But 
Uh, I reckon judge me is better. TBH. Um, what other apps? I don't really use any other apps though. To like, yeah, to build your store. There are other applications though that you can get. If you're, if you don't have a paid theme, you can get applications that like do make your business, you know, look cooler. Um, if you like a certain website, I have a tip for you guys. Let me see if I can find it before I try and tell you the tip because I won't be able to remember this off the top of my head. Okay. Um, let me just read this and see if I can find it. So I would recommend um, getting like a color palette going on, like try and have some colors that are like specific to your brand. Uh... Yeah, I have, I have no idea which one it is, but there's actually like a, I think it's an archer types. That's what I wrote written down here, but there's, there's like something you can type in. Um, that lets you go onto that website and then type in someone else's website and then you can look at all the apps and like what Shopify everything really that they use. Um, so if you like the website, you can go check out what apps they're using. What else have I got here? These are just like some notes that I wrote down from watching um, YouTube videos on different Shopify stuff that you can add to your store, which I didn't end up adding any of these, I'll be honest, because I just got so stressed with it all. Um, like there's Wholesale Club, so like there's some sort of app you can do for wholesales, or Wholesaler, Smile, loyal, which is a loyalty program, Upsell Recommendations, I do need to add that, like it means like it has in your cart it says hey you want to buy this too that sort of thing um i tried the photo resize as well i did get that and i paid for it i found that on my website super slow though still so i don't know um but yeah that's some some tips for the Shopify. I'm gonna put that back over there now. Wee. That can go over there. Okay, what were you studying at university? I was studying a business degree. Um, I hated it. <laughs> it was just so boring, honestly. Like maybe if I chose a different, like I really wanted to go to this specific university. Um, and possibly if I chose a different university, it would have been more content based, I know, better, better content. But the stuff that they were teaching, the only valuable thing I learned nearly that whole year was how to use Excel. That was the only valuable thing. Everything else was just jargon, stuff that I didn't need to know. Um, I wanted to do the business um, degree because I wanted to, you know, learn more and like be better in my own business. But everything, it just wasn't relevant. It just wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't what I imagined it would be and I was just really disappointed um and especially like I think my breaking point was like I was doing masks so last year when um Victor well, Melbourne announced that they needed masks and then all of a sudden regional needed them too I was inundated with orders I was still working part-time um which is when I quit as well put my resignation in and I decided to quit university because I was like no nah. I'm not enjoying it. Um, I want to go to university to learn, not, you know, find out who's the best person on LinkedIn. Like, I was so mad at some of those assignments. They were just such, like, 
just, I can't even say the word that I want to say. It was just, it just was useless information. Um, so yeah, I was really disappointed in the course. Um, would I go back to university? Sure, I would definitely consider going back uh, in the future, but I probably would, one, go in person, I feel, um, possibly. And two, I would probably choose a different thing to study um, or a different university in general, maybe one that actually specialises in business or like I was doing business management, no business with a bachelor of business with a, what is it called? Bachelor of business with a something in management, no, oh my God, this is so embarrassing, with a degree in man marketing, marketing, it was marketing, <laughs> business and marketing. I can't even remember what it was called now. Bachelor of Business with a degree. I don't know. Whatever. But <laughs> yeah, I was doing marketing. Uh, and that's what I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn, you know, different things about marketing. I like nothing the whole year. I was like, seriously? Like you can choose your own units and stuff. But the ones I chose, I thought that'd be, you know, I thought that'd be good. The ones I chose, they sound like that'd be good. So useless. I literally don't remember anything from it. Like it was just such stuff I wouldn't never use, uh, besides the Excel. So yeah, um, that was my experience with uni. Um, and I, I didn't need it. I only wanted to go to uni because I wanted to further myself. And like I love learning. Like I love school so much. I learned so much more in business management class than I did in university. Um. And, like, I wasted so much money as well. It was, like, seven grand or something for the units that I did. Ugh, it was just such a waste. Um, but, yeah. It's not something that I need. I don't need a business degree um, to, you know, run a successful business. Many, many people have done it without, um, without running university. So, yeah. I think maybe doing courses or something or like Skillshare even but then I start to find the time to do that sort of stuff to like further my knowledge like I feel like I gain more knowledge on marketing through YouTube than I ever did in university <laughs> but yeah I mean that would be different for every school though just yeah the one I went to I just found it just wasn't wasn't for me didn't learn anything and I don't know, it just really annoyed me that I didn't learn. Like, I spent so much time. Actually, I didn't even spend that much time on it. Like, it was, assignments were so easy, and I was just like, oh, ugh. It, it was frustrating because, like, I just wasn't learning. And the stuff that they wanted us to do was just like, well, this is like kid work. <laughs> I don't know. Um, do you run Mabel Tellerys as a sole trader or company? Ah, uh, sole trader. I am a sole trader. I think company, you have to pay more for stuff. <laughs> um, like, is it business name you have to pay more? And, like, insurance is probably... Yeah, I, I didn't really see the need of running a company over a sole trader because it's just me. Um, how much time do you dedicate to the sewing and packing orders, etc., and to the social media part of your business? How do you organize your time? Um, I'm getting tired because that question did not resonate in my head. <laughs> well, okay, so usually on a Monday and Tuesday, I'll do all the sewing, cutting, and making of the scrunchies. I'm a bit behind because uh, Monday, yesterday, I spent the, is it Monday, right? Is that what the day it is? Yeah, Monday, yesterday, I spent the whole day doing all my wholesale orders. So I'm already like a day behind, pretty much. Um, usually I'll have all my orders pretty much done. Uh, and then I'll spend a whole day packing. Packing takes so long. Um, it really does. It takes such an effort. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, if I've missed anything, I'll have to go make those quickly as well at the end of the day before I ship everything out. Um, so that's usually Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, Thursday is when I usually 
uh, edit the YouTube video and upload it for that day. Uh, which is why sometimes it's a bit later than other times. Because I've had so many issues lately. Like I've had... Sorry if I can wipe my face. There's all this lint going in my face. Um, and I don't really want to wear a mask right now because I'm on live stream. So, um, this thing, not this thing. I have a cord. This, um, it's broke. Not this one. Uh, the one I had before. It lasted, what, 12, no, 13 months. And it just decided to die on me. Now, I, I, like, all my videos, um, that I had on my camera it was like coming out all weird it was all glitchy and I was like oh no like that's all I need like I like the video's corrupt and I got really worried but it turned out okay like it was fine I just had to go buy a new one and luckily I was so lucky that we went in lockdown at that point because I would have been like because oh. yeah and then the week before I was sick and then the week before that I had um the website launch I think so I had so many orders ah oh, yeah so I've had so much trouble the last few weeks with um with uploading my video. The I think the video I just uploaded, which was the short vlog, that was so easy because it was so short. It only took me like an hour to edit, not even that. And then it only took like 10 minutes to upload. So that's why I'm thinking, I know you guys love the long vlogs, but I'm also thinking for my sanity, I might start doing some short ones as well. Um, <laughs> Because the long ones, they, they do take a long time to edit. There's like six hours worth of content usually. So it usually does take me like a full day to edit it. Which sometimes I just don't have the time for, unfortunately. But I do have, I have my camera set up right now. I'm actually doing like a vlog right now, this one. And then I have a vlog before that and then a vlog before that. So I've got three vlogs coming up, long ones. Um, yeah, at least three, pretty sure. So yeah, and they'll be really long ones. That'll be the next couple weeks. But then I've also got like heaps of tutorials on a post. So I think I might do another posting day, which I do do randomly, probably like a Tuesday night or something. And I'll post like random content, like um, business advice or um, tutorials, that sort of stuff. Because I know you guys do prefer the vlogs over that sort of stuff. But, you know, some sometimes those do well as well. Where were we going with that? <laughs> um, and the social media part. <sighs> social media, I mean, this morning I spent way too long trying to get the perfect reel of one of my wholesale orders. I'll be honest, like, it... I took way too long doing that. Um, so yeah, I usually, usually really quick though. I'm usually like, I see something, it's sunny, take photos, quick, quick, quick. Um, and later on in that day or week, I'll post it. I'm really slack with my social media. Like I don't have it scheduled. I should have it scheduled, but I don't. Um, and I'm always like, you know, going in and just finding a photo to post in amongst like, 50,000 photos. Um, yeah. I need I need to do some, like, scheduled posting or something or at least having a bunch ready to go so then they're ready for the week. Um, that's something I need to do. But I haven't got around to it. And then for my reels and stuff, I usually bulk... Um, I bulk film them in a the day. Like, I have, like, all these ideas I have... I film them all and then I edit them over time. But usually, like the last lot of reels I edited, which was Sunday, I did a heap of reels. They all took so long to edit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, they took so long. I think I only edited like six or seven. I've got like 50 sitting there and I have to edit. Um, yeah, I just, I just bulk film. Because otherwise they just take too long. Take too much time out of your day. Um, I just, yeah, and how do I organize my time? I just try and fit as much as I can into a day, which, you know, sometimes is not possible. But this one's been cut before. Interesting. Okay. Oh, God, we're 20 minutes behind again. <laughs> 23 minutes. 
I gotta still go on rambles. Thanks, Kiera, and thanks, Kathy. How long did it take you to grow your business to the point of being able to do full time? Um, so I started when I was 15 years old. Uh, that was like year nine in Australia. Uh, so that was almost eight years ago. So I didn't like, I didn't just sort of like quit everything as soon as I started my business. Um, I still was work that came up for uh, six years. Um, before I decided to, you know, throw in the chair. <laughs> and I also worked at Harris Scarf for two years as well after I finished school um, because I was meant to have a gap year. Um, when I finished high school, uh, I was meant to have a gap year, which included doing as many, many markets as I can to save as much money as I can so I could go live in Melbourne. Um, then at the end of that year, and at like, the start of the next year, uh, we which was 2020, was it? No, it wasn't. Why am I there? Was it 2019? Must have been 2019. Because I finished school in 2017. The gap year. Yeah, 2019. Like, my business started, like, really taking off. Um, and I think it was because I was putting so much more effort into it. Like, um, in, during school, I would get a couple orders a week and still post them. Um, I was posting. I was posting consistently. But, like, it wasn't, you know, every single day at a specific time. Like, it was, like, every day or two. Um, but yeah, I started like really like ramping it up and trying, um, to sort of get the business going, but at the same time trying to make as much money as I can because I wanted to go to university. I wanted to like, um, do that sort of stuff. But then I decided to take another year off because the business was booming and then I was still working at Harris Scarf during that period as well. So, um, I, I did two years at Harris Scarf before I decided to quit in October of 2000 and. 19 and then I only had the business and my Kmart job part-time job um and then by the start of 2020 in January that's when everything just exploded for me um I had the bushfire donation scrunchies I think that's what really boosted it um I ended up donating over four thousand dollars to the Australian bushfires um and then we had the yellow people release which was the simpsons collection um that was massive i've had like 300 orders from that then i had the face masks that year as well um another 300 400 orders um within the span of like two weeks it was crazy and then i had the event calendars like it was four massive standout points of that year that just sort of made my business grow so fast um from, you know, being very small, like, hobby sort of thing to, like, an actual full-time business. Um, and it was just those stepping stones that sort of, like, boosted it. And, like, it's just been growing at, like, a rapid pace ever since. Um, yeah, and in 2020, I ended up uh, leaving my part-time job at Kmart and quitting university. So I did decide to go to university in 2020, starting in, um, like, I applied in January on the last day of acceptance. I was like, yep, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I applied, um, obviously with the coronavirus and everything, um, I was lucky to be online anyway. So I was doing online study. I thought that was the best option for me with the business. Um, I thought, yeah, I didn't really want to travel to Melbourne every day um, or like every couple of days. I thought that would be such a waste of my time. Um, that's two hours each way. Uh, and I didn't really want to take public transport because I also want to save money. And I was just thinking like, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of money <laughs> traveling. I don't want to rent up there like because that's more money. Um, I'd rather save my money to go towards my house deposit. Um, so yeah, then, yeah, then, then we're here. <laughs> um, so at the start of this year, I was at 15K followers on Instagram. Now I'm at 32. Um, so I've doubled this year. Um, so far, like, I don't know what I'll be at the end of December. Um, and that was mostly through reels. Um, the reels have really just, you know, boosted everything, um, all my analytics. Um, and as for the sales, a lot of those do come through YouTube. Um, YouTube also boosted in January of this year. I became monetized on YouTube at late December of last year. 
after having my channel for about six months. Um, and yeah, once I was monetized, one of my videos went viral. Um, and then, yeah, it just started growing. Um, and now I'm almost at 30k subscribers for here as well. So YouTube's slowly catching up to Instagram. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my business story. <laughs> um, I definitely didn't quit uh, my jobs or anything before I felt it was time. And like, honestly, it was probably time a long, long time before I quit, but I was very loyal to Kayla. I didn't want to leave there, um, especially because like it did keep me fit and it did, um, you know, for like mental health, I was seeing people every day and I was talking to people. It was really good because now um, there's not a lot of talking going on. I know I'm talking to you guys on here, but it's not the same as face to face. Uh, so yeah, it, it can get lonely, I guess. But I'm also okay with it. Um, I didn't think I would be at first, but I'm actually okay with being sort of alone. Um, yeah, I didn't think I would be, but I am. Um, it's not too bad. So, yeah, that was a massive tangent. I'm sorry. I'm probably like 15 minutes behind now. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Um, what is your favorite food? Oh my God, there's so much food. I love food so much. Um, oh, that's such a hard question. <laughs> I love mozzarella. Anything with mozzarella is really good. I'm really loving jelly cups at the moment, like jelly cups with fruit in them. <laughs> Such a child. Um, what else do you like? Wagon wheels. They are great. I love wagon wheels. Oh. Also, real weird question. Have you guys had, so you know coconut water, I guess. I don't know. Coconut something. It's not water. Milk? Coconut milk, maybe? Have you ever had one of them, like in a, in a can? And you've opened the top and it's all chunky up top. Like it's all solid, solidified. Have you ever had that? That's good. <laughs> um, we've been having HelloFresh like the last couple of weeks. And every time we get one of those cans, it's all solidified at the top. And I'll just like sit there and eat it. <laughs> it's actually so good. I don't know. Uh, like it's also kind of like, it kind of grosses me out. But at the same time, it's like, oh. Oh, and there's also this cheese. Um, I mentioned it in one of my vlogs that are coming up. Uh, it is a good cheese. I have no idea what the name is, but it's good. I love cheese. Just cheese in general is good. Soft cheese, brew cheese, that sort of stuff. Um, do you use more the burrito method or the OG method? Uh, I use the OG method more uh, because I make more of my normal size scrunchies. So I have my normal size scrunchies and my XL scrunchies. Normal size, I do OG, XL, I do burrito. I do make more of my normal size just because, um, not necessarily because they, uh, I guess they sell more because like they're the cheaper one. Um, XL's a double the price pretty much. So oh, I don't sell as many, so I don't make as many. Are you guys, you got it. <laughs> I see in the comments, you guys have already replied to that. <laughs> Hi, Regina. Do you own an analog planner or a digital planner? I don't. <laughs> what I do though, this is what I do. I have lovely pages like this and it says like, September week two, like that's the week I'm on now. Actually, it shouldn't even say September. I need to make a new page, um, like for August week. No, what are we in? October, oh my God, October week one. Um, but yeah, I'll go like urgent and I'll make a list. So I'm, I'm really into lists and paper. I couldn't, I could not do it online. No way. Um, so yeah, I'm really into like physical 
handwriting. Um, so I like marketing, um, like headings, I'm saying, uh, market prep, purchases, orders, YouTube, and then I just have like things underneath it. Um, this page here is actually almost all done, like um, for September week three, four. So I do need to make a new page on this page for this week, um, just to yeah put everything else that I need to get done. Um, yeah, most, most pretty much everything on here is actually done, which is good. So I don't have to bring much over from the week before. Ha also, has any, has any, uh, it's said, I had to even think about how do you say that properly. <laughs> has some of your, has any one of your elastics come undone from sewing? Oh my God. <laughs> no. That, nah, never. Um, besides that one video which I made um, where I pulled pulled one apart because I accidentally realised that there was, was actually sticky tape together. Um, but the actual join, never. There's never ever come apart. Um, I go back and forth like four or five, look, four times, like three or four times. It's never come apart ever. Um, yeah, the only time that uh, it's ever happened was because I accidentally... Um, do you do the invisible stitch to close the scrunchie? No, I don't. Thank you, Teresa. Um, does your YouTube channel have an Instagram account? Not really. Um, like I have my business account, which is made by Taylor Rose. I have a personal account, which is Taylor Rose with four H's. Don't ask me why. That's just how I did it back in the day. Um, but I don't really post on there much. Um, I posted, actually the most regular posts I've done are both with Reese. Um, one with, actually it's just me, Reese and Flo. Cause it was her first birthday last week. So I posted that one. And then I posted the photo where we went to Port something. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. I think I'm like half an hour on. <laughs> In these comments, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you, Sophie, for moderating. I know it's like half an hour past. I did thank her already. She did text me up. I went out of the app and thanked her. She did a great job. If I didn't even ask her to moderate. She just jumped on, so yeah. Thank you. Major in marketing, that's what it is. It's a major in marketing. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> so I had a business degree with a major in marketing. Yep. Um. How many scrunchies do you think you have sold in your business? Well, I remember like, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, I, I was able to count like 8,000, but that was like, I think that was two years ago. I don't think it was last year I did that, so I don't know. Uh, probably in the 30s or 40s, 50s, thousands. Like a lot, there's, there's a lot. I could probably work it out if I worked out my elastic. I don't know. It, it, there's been a lot though. Um, where do you get ideas for socials? Um, where do you get your motivation? Um, well, for like my Instagram photos and stuff, it's all pretty basic. I 
much prefer doing behind the scenes. I feel like they do a lot better um, than just posting photos that are like website photos. Um, so like I try and do that sort of stuff. Um, but I've always done that though. But like for reels, I would usually just <laughs> literally sit on my phone and go through my, my reels, um, my reel section and just look for interesting sounds or interesting concepts and then I'll save them for later and then um, I'll pick a day out of a month and be like, this is the real day. So then I'll go through and I'll like um, go, oh yes, this is what I need to do. I need to make a scrunchie and then move it and then something else, you know, for that sound effect or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's sort of what I do for the reels. Um, how old am I? I'm 22 years old. <laughs> um, this, there, the new merchandise coming soon. So, oh my God. So I've, I've had like so many quotes come through. Um, if, oh, okay, I'm going to ask you guys. So there's two choices that I'm considering. There's AS Color, which is a really good brand. Um, very high quality. But then there's Gildan. Um, if I go with Gildan, I'll be able to sell the jumpers for quite substantially cheaper. But if I go with AS Color, they're going to be at least $80, $90. Like, they're going to be expensive because AS Color is so expensive. Um, they are very good quality, though. So, yeah, that's, that's like the dilemma I'm having right now um, is deciding on which uh, to go for. I'm thinking maybe I'll go for Gildan first. I wanted, I do want to go and sample some though. So I'm going to order some. I have a whole two massive boxes out here of the AS Color, um, which I purchased. I will go get some in a second um, and show you guys. But yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Gildan I'm considering um, to start off with. And then maybe down the line, if I, if I see people ordering the merch, ordering the... Um, I will go, I'll show you guys what I've got planned. I wasn't going to, but I'll show you guys. Um, it's on my iPad. But yeah, I was, if I see that they're actually selling and I, I will be able to go into like, you know, that next price bracket of like discounts, because like minimum quantities, they're very expensive. But like if you order like 50 or 100 of that jump, of that exact same jumper with that exact same print, um, you know, it could be a lot cheaper. So then I could probably lower the prices. So I'm thinking I might start with Gildan and then then work my way to AS Color and bring some in. But yeah, I don't know yet. Cause yeah, the pricing is very expensive and I'd probably have to go with screen printing at this point. Like I really want to do embroidery, but embroidery is so expensive as well. Um, which is, I can definitely see uh, why. I have an embroidery machine. I know, I know what it's like. Um, I have, like I know people have said to do it in-house, but I just don't have time. I have the Cricut. Um, I will be doing a video on me using it to do the HTV. I don't even know. Like the stuff that you heat press on. I have heat press. I have the Cricut. I could do it, but I don't want to. I want to get it done professionally by a professional screen printer so I know I'm giving you guys the best quality. Um, but I do want to buy some of these Gildan uh, jumpers first and see what they're like. Because if I, I mean, if I get them and I say, Ugh, you know, they're terrible, I'm not going to buy them and sell them to you guys. Like, I want to make sure that they are high quality. I want to make sure they last. I want to make sure, like, they're not going to ball up, you know. Like, this jumper I have, it balls up so easily. Um, this is from Blank Clothing. Uh, I had a look. I think it's, like, a, a 30, 30% cotton and 70% uh, polyester. I feel like that's why it balls, but I'm not positive. Um, so that's why. Hang on two secs. I'm going to go grab some of these jumpers. Um, maybe say hi to Flo because she's been sitting outside the door for probably three hours. Um, I'll be back.
so black on behind. I haven't even come in the room yet. Okay. So, this is just one box. I purchased three boxes full, but I've only received two so far. So, this color, um, I was able to get cheaper. But I have quite a few of these coming. Like, I've got a heap of these. Um, so, this particular one is going to be my merch one. I will bring out different colors for the merch, um, for sure. But I thought this one was a cute color. We got these two. These are all hoodies, by the way. All my sweaters are coming in the next parcel. <laughs> so, we got that color. But these ones are, like, super fleecy. They're really nice. They feel lovely. Um, whereas this one... It's not fleecy, it's like a different cotton sort of material. Um, which I thought it was fleece, but that might be why I was discounted, I don't know. Then we got um, Grey Mail, which is sort of similar to the colour I'm wearing. I think it is the colour I'm wearing. Um, so I got that one as well. And then there is two or two other colours, or just two other styles. I wanted to bring the sweaters in. But um, I don't know how much I'll be able to do first up because like they're they're expensive if you're not buying like 50 at a time and they have to be the exact same you know what's going on here i'm going to show you guys i don't know how much of this you're about to see okay let's have a look okay i'm going to pick the ones that have the most contrast so then you guys actually might have a chance So this one is my business one, like my merch. So it's just going to be like made by Televeries with EST underneath. My video is so lag behind, so I'm like waiting to see if you guys can even see this. Okay, kind of can. Yeah. Um, then we've got this one. And I will mention before I even show you guys, I have to change what it says because I've noticed that there is a trademark in the US and I want to sell to you guys in the US so I will be changing the the wording but it will still have the same meaning so we've got this one which is, yeah community over competition but I won't be specifically those wordings because I can't sell to US because of the trademark um hopefully you guys can see that I don't want to leave it too long in front of the camera um then we've got entrepreneur um so that is with a paid font um yeah and i really like that font so that one's cute and i want to do small business owner but i don't know about this one i'm sort of thinking i might have it sort of small like this and in, in a different font but yeah that's that one i don't really like it though so i'm still in the debates on that one um, so yeah, they're the, they're the four that I'm thinking of bringing in. Um, if I had to choose two of them, it would be the community of competition and my merch, um, for now. And then if they sell, okay, I'll bring in more. But yeah, that's, for now, that's what I'm thinking. And probably, definitely the grey male, the pinks, and I'm thinking like a brownie colour, maybe. We'll see. Like, it just... Yeah, I need to be careful with the cost because, like, I'm not even joking. Like, I've gotten so many quotes from so many different places today and they're so expensive everywhere for the AS call. I just got quoted with um, Gildan, though, and I can I can make Gildan work for a cheaper... Like, it's still going to be expensive, but I can make it work for a bit cheaper. How did you grow your channel? Uh, I lucked out, for sure. Um, definitely lucked out with that one. Uh, I just had a video that was very popular. And I also had the business beforehand. So I had about, I'm going to say 10, 13K. No, 10K. Around 10K when I started YouTube. So on, on Instagram. So uh, it was quite easy for me to get up, you know, 1,000 subscribers. 
Um, it, it didn't take very long. It, oh, I still took a few months though, I suppose. But in saying that, I opened my account the 1st of July, like around the first week of July, but then I didn't post for two months after my first video because I was busy. So really, it, like it was four months that it took me to get monetized. Um, and yeah, and then one of my videos went viral, which is, I lucked out really, I really did. Okay, I'm still 30 minutes behind in comments, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. I'll have to visit Tasmania. That sounds like a good place. I haven't been to Tasmania. I've been, I haven't even been to Perth or Western Australia or South Australia. Oh my God, I haven't been anywhere. <laughs> How are you doing with life? Oh, with a life? How are you doing a life right now? <laughs> Lisa, how are you doing with life? Um, this is how I'm doing with life and life because I can't even read and speak right now. Um, yeah, it's past midnight right now. <laughs> um, it's 12.10. I'm okay though because um, we're in daylight savings time now. So really it would be only 11.10 right now, right? Is that how it works? Last night I slept till 2 o'clock because I just wasn't tired. Um, usually I go to bed pretty early though. Ah, sorry you guys, lost sound. Well, like, how bad would that be if I've just been talking this whole time and you haven't been able to hear me? <laughs> Hang on, I just gonna scroll down a little bit. You guys can hear me still, right? <laughs> I hope so. I hope you guys can hear me. How embarrassing. Thank you, Phyllis. Favorite fabric to use? Um, at the moment, probably satin or galena. Uh, just because I like the feel of them. Thank you, Margaret. Um, the reason I wouldn't go for both jumpers to start off with is just because the cost. Like, to bring in, like, just for example, for you guys, to bring in one design, it's going to cost me with one colour. One design, one colour, it's going to cost me at least $1,500 just to bring in that for only like a couple jumpers, like 20 jumpers, 30 jumpers. <laughs> it, it's expensive. So I, I don't want to spend, you know, 10 grand on jumpers <laughs> to start off with. So that's why I'm like, okay, I'm only going to have like a couple to bring in first. And which is why I also want to go with Gildan. Um, so it won't cost that massive amount straight up. Because they are like half the price of AS. AS is very expensive if you're not ordering a lot of stuff. Hi, Anne. Um, I've already sort of answered my favourite fabrics, but my least favourite, least favourite is, hmm, I don't know, probably rayon, for, for scrunchies in particular, because they don't hold up very well, like, the round creases and crushes, 
and it just doesn't have that nice plush effect that the cottons, your cords, your velvets, um, satin even, that they all have nice plush effect and will continue having a nice plush effect in months and years to come. Like I still have my first velvet scrunchie that I made like four years ago and it looks perfect in perfect condition. Whereas if it was a round one, which I do have round ones I've made years ago as well, they just look terrible because they're all crushed in. They don't look good. So probably round. Like even though they look beautiful to start off with, they don't hold up very well. Oh, I'm glad you guys are recommending Gildan. I'll have to get some samples. So I purchased samples from AS Colour. Um, and then, I, yeah, I also did purchase this colour in particular and I got 25 hoodies because they were cheaper um, to buy because uh, on clearance. Um, and I liked the colour, I like pink. So, um, but yeah, I think I will get some samples from Gildan and see what they're like and give them a whirl. Because I, I know that a lot of other, like, screen printing businesses use Gildan. So that, like... In, in US specifically, um, like a lot of people that make jumpers and stuff, they use Gildan. I even think Tina uses Gildan. Like I was watching one of her vlogs and I think I saw a Gildan box in the background. So I know she does merch. I, I don't know though. But yeah, I have heard a lot of other businesses using Gildan. You're very welcome, made by Mama1359. You can tell your kids that I respond to you verbally as well. <laughs> um, so with the community over competition, I'm going to do sisterhood over competition. I know it sounds cliche and like cringy, but I thought sisterhood was nice, nice, and it's like, I don't know. I, I like it. I, I do, I really do like it. it's grown on me since I decided on it last week. Um, so yeah, just like, it's still got the same meaning, like community, but it's like, you know, we're into this together, women and stuff. So, um, like doing our small businesses and stuff. So I thought that was a really good way to do it. And it's not trademarked anywhere. So, um, yeah, I probably should trademark it. <laughs> so I don't get in trouble later on. But, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to plan to do. I may come out with a different one. There is another slogan, which is more unisex, um, that me and a friend came up with, um, which was a really good idea as well. Um, but I'm sort of set on sisterhood. And that was, I, I, I like sisterhood. Um, I know it's cringy, but I like it. <laughs> What's your favourite step in making a scrunchie? Um, I like the flipping part. Or the cutting. I really enjoy the cutting, actually. Um, not on this table, though. Oh, my God. This table. So low. I really want the tables that move up and down, but I don't think I'll be very stable enough for that. I would love... I really miss my table from the farm. Like, I had, like, a the bottom of a buffet hutch. Buffet hutch? I don't know. It was the bottom of one. And it was just, just, it was like here, it was higher. And it was just, oh, the back pain was non-existent. So, yeah, I do miss my high tables. I can't wait to get higher tables. And one that moves up and down. <laughs> that was like my, my, besides the embroidery, oh, uh, not the embroidery machine, besides the, um, the industrial machine, uh, a table that moves up and down is like, you know, that thing I really want, but I just don't have room for um, industrial machine, I'm going to make the room for, but yeah, the one that moves on the other, I'm just not for room at the moment.
Daylight saving started for us on Sunday night. We skipped an hour. So instead of being like two o'clock, it was three. <laughs> so that was fun. Lost an hour of sleep. I felt, I still feel weird about it. I'm not used to it yet. Uh, my exact measurements, my scrunchies are like 4.5 by half of the WOF. So that can be anywhere between like 22 to 29 inches. Um, can you do a daily routine with the market, please? Hopefully when markets start back up, but probably won't be until next year, honestly, because uh, I think I'll be too busy to be filming for these uh, markets that are coming up. But like next year will be better. Um, do you have any tips on starting out a scrunchie business on Etsy? Um, you definitely have to like try and um, differentiate, differ, differentiate yourself from other people, um, especially on Etsy, because you, you know, you're piled in with so many other people. Um, definitely try and do some SEO research, search engine optimization, Make sure you've got all that um, under control. <laughs> you want to make sure that your tags, your titles and everything are up to scratch. Because, um, yeah, it is it is a very big market for scrunchies on Etsy. So, yeah, it is a bit harder to grow um, with scrunchies. So definitely try and make yourself a bit different to other people. Um, why don't you want to do yourself printing with vinyl? Because I don't have the time. I just don't have the time. <laughs> I'm just too busy with everything. I'd rather get someone else to do it. And I'm also a little bit worried about the vinyl. Like, I'm worried that it'll crack or something. I feel like screen printings um, through, like, professional businesses, they're not going to come off, um, crack or do anything bad. Like, customers won't be able to damage it easy is what I'm getting at. <laughs> um, but, yeah, just don't have the time. How are you still awake? Yeah, I don't know. I might have to jump off soon because I'm getting tired. <laughs> uh, thank you, Petra. 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 I'm really bad at saying name. Oh, we're almost caught up in the comments. Yeah, doing a merch is very time consuming um, and I just don't have the time for it. Like, I have an embroidery machine, but it's literally this big to embroid. I made this with it. I did, I made this with it, but it took me three goes and it was very hard to do. It was very hard to line up. Um, I have the Cricut. I could do vinyl uh, on them. But yeah, it's just, it's just the time. It's just, I don't have the time to do it. I do have my large heat press. Like, I've got the equipment. I just don't have time. Um, yeah. Uh, what industrial machine are you thinking of getting? I'm thinking about getting the Juki. Yeah. Um, I mentioned earlier, I'm, I've been inspired by Tina and Angela. They both have, like, Tina from XXL Scrunchies, Angela, Jasmina, <laughs> I'm terrible with names. Um, but yeah, so Tina's got, like, a Juki 2 2010, and then Angela has, like, one that's, like, a full-on, like, industrial machine. Like, it's, you know, heavy. It's it's got a table and everything. Um, I'm more leaning towards the one Tina has because of the size and the I do not have the room in here for a big machine like uh Angela's. But I would much prefer that one because it does five thousand stitches per minute. I just don't have the room for it though. So I'm thinking I'll get maybe the Juki twenty ten for now. Um and then once I move into a bigger studio I will get the other one 
that can be my present for moving into a bigger studio. <laughs> but yeah, that won't be for a while because I still have to build the house and buy land. I just, yeah, I haven't done it yet. Haven't, haven't decided on where I want to build. I'm sort of just waiting in a waiting game. How do you cope with followers on Insta and YouTube copying your style? I actually, um, okay, so for starters, I used to get very, very upset about it, like, years ago, when people would come in and, like, copy me completely, like, they'd copy my name, they'd copy, like, obviously, what they sell, they'd copy my bio, my descriptions, everything, they'd copy everything. Um, I think there's a big difference between copying inspiration, like, I think I've moved on from being upset about that sort of stuff and I find most people do get inspired rather than copy these days from me or at least that's why I notice like I do notice a lot of people with inspiration from me and that's okay like I don't mind that at all like I'm happy for you guys to be inspired by what I post and um you know take advice and tips from me and stuff I have noticed though lately um there was someone that has copied my descriptions from my websites and use them in their description and has been using the same terminology as me and stuff. That it bothered me a little bit, I won't lie. Like like I don't yeah, I don't really usually get bothered by it, but I think I don't know. Just plain copy in my descriptions and stuff and like even like, like my titles and stuff, I was like, mm, I don't like that. <laughs> um because yeah, there, there is a difference between inspiration and just plain out copying. And yeah. As much as it it is annoying, but you can't stop it. Like, there's always going to be copying. Everyone's everyone's always going to um, copy each other in business. It's just it's something that's never going to stop. Um, if you find it happening to you, like, just move on. Um, like, I used to spend so much time, like, back in 2014 being so upset over people copying me. And, like, I would, you know, try and block them. I would, you know, try and do so much to stop it you can't stop it like you stop one person there's going to be two more that come up in their place so you just got to learn to live with it I suppose and just a lot of and just realize that a lot of them are just inspired by you and they're not mean to you know copy you they're just inspired and I think yeah there is a big difference between inspired and copy um and obviously there is a lot of people that just copy straight out <laughs> and like even steal your photos and stuff but you, you really can't do much about it um, besides just take that negativity out of your life and focus on you move move forward in your business don't focus on them um, yeah that's what that's probably my biggest advice for that yeah you can't get upset and you know um, stuck on it because it's just gonna eat away at you and you're gonna waste time on it and you don't want to waste time on it you want to focus on your business and your growth Hello, Gemma. Aren't you Australia? Isn't it like late for you? <laughs> Handmade gems? Oh, it's not Gemma. Handmade gems would be just gems, yeah? Or is it Gemma? Ah, bad at names. Sorry. <laughs> what is your actual name? But isn't it? Isn't it? I, I thought you were in Australia. I really did. Is it 12.30 right now for you? Um... Um, how many listings did you start off with on Etsy and also did you have many different fabrics for your scrunchies? So I started off with bows and I had probably, I'm going to say 20 listings back in the day. I think you can still do it, but you can actually set, oh, sorry. I'm like, you want to number them at the same time. Um, you can actually send off like these things on Etsy and you get like 40 free listings or something if you create a new account. That's what I did. Um, I did it with myself. Uh, that's probably very illegal or whatever, but yeah, I did it with myself way back in the day, like seven years ago, eight years ago. And I created another like, account, which gave me 40 free listings. So I just used them. Um, I think maybe I started with 20 and then I added another 20 as I went along a couple months after. Um, with my bows, I was, I only needed 10 centimeters. So yeah, I would just go into spotlight by 10 centimeters of a fabric. 
And I'd make like eight to ten bows. So it wasn't a big um, thing for me to purchase a lot of fabric, uh, like a lot of different fabrics. And then in that case, I was putting more than one fabric type in the listing. Um, although I don't think that started until um, only a couple of years ago. They didn't have quantity options for different variations. So once that came in is when I started doing that. I think for the start, I had them all separate. Yeah, I did. Um, it wasn't until they brought that in. It was only a couple of years ago that I added everything into like one bulk listing. Um, not everything, but like everything that's similar into one bulk listing. Thank you, Home of the Rustic Fox, for watching. Hope you go well in your pop-up shop. Thank you, Beyonce. Um, did you see Tina change her sewing machine? No, I didn't. What sewing machine does she have now? I only watched um, the review one, so I don't know. I haven't actually watched any of her new warehouse vlogs, so I'm not sure um, what she has. Let me know what she has. I actually haven't looked. Did she get an actual industrial? Like a faster one? Um, do you do all your sewing yourself or does someone help you? I do all my sewing myself. Yeah, I thought it was Gemma. Yeah, I thought it was Melon too. Okay, I'm not going crazy. <laughs> I was like, uh, I'm really bad with names and stuff, but like, I like sort of have an idea. I'm like, I think that's it. Thank you, Kim. Oh, that's so interesting. I'll have to have a look at her most recent videos and see what she says about it. Because, like, yeah, I was, like, going off her recommendation because I heard, and, like, there's a heap of other videos for that specific machine. But I haven't done any research on any other industrial machines yet. I was just looking at Juki because I saw that, you know, those two had um, Juki machines. Yeah, I don't really want one that breaks a lot. Like, these ones have been really good. Like, they haven't broken at all. A burnt, a burnt, burnt, I can't say it. Benina. Benina machine, okay. I don't even know if I can still do markets. Like, we did sale. Like, I did sale. Um, and then... The next week I was meant to do Mervy, but they weren't allowed. I don't know. So I don't know how sale went ahead. Um, and then Glengarry wasn't allowed. <laughs> so I don't know how sale went ahead. Um, so I don't even know if I'm going to have any markets in October at all. Because um, I know Rogaby still doesn't have markets. Um, for people like sewers, um, they only have like food. Um, so yeah, I don't even know. I'm so... Yeah, I'm not sure if any markets will be coming up for me in October. I've got markets booked in. Not many, but I've got them booked in, but I, I don't know if they'll be allowed. Where do you purchase all your packaging boxes from? Uh, EB Packaging. They are in Australia. They're quite fast on shipping, but like obviously with shipping delays, not that great at the moment, but yeah. Hi, oh, thanks, Jala. 
Um, yeah, the food markets, definitely. Um, yeah, well, Sale was the, like, a full-on market. But they had security and everything there, so I don't know. And now indoors. Mine. I have no idea how that went ahead. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, we'll see if it's allowed again. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Because, yeah, Merbury keeps being food only, and so does Rugby. And um, I'm booked in for Yarragon, but I don't know if that's going to go ahead. And they don't know either. But I put my name down. Um, and what else? I don't know. Oh, Glengarry, but they probably won't go ahead because, like, you need all these extra things. Like, you need security and stuff and all this other stuff, like QR codes for each individual store. It's a lot. Yeah, it's really surprising. <laughs> but, I mean, they must have had council approval and stuff because, yeah, there was council approval. And there was council people there. And there was police there. there was, uh, cops came through. Um, and one of the police officers purchased my Navy scrunchies. <laughs> I get a lot of police officers come through and um, purchase all my Navy ones. Oh, well, guys, I've, I've finally come to the end of my comments. I think, I think it's time to go. How long have I been on for? Hang on. What is it? 9 o'clock? 9, 10, 11, 12. Been on for three and a half hours. <laughs> three and a half hours and I've done nothing. I was meant to thread all these and I haven't done that. So, yeah. I think I'm going to head off. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I know some of you have been here from the start. You guys are awesome. Um, <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed the vlog. Uh, not the vlog, the live stream. Um, it should be up later, but I don't know when because it is like nearly four hours. Um, yeah, I hope you guys all have a lovely day, night, evening, afternoon, wherever you guys are. <laughs> and I will see you guys next time. If you don't follow me already, follow me on Instagram because that's where I post information about me going uh live on my stories and stuff so thank you good night <laughs>